Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the uh, Los Angeles City Board of Public Works. It's Wednesday, June, tw June 9th, 2021. Um, I'm President Greg Good. Uh, Dr. Campos, do we have a quorum? Thank you, Mr. President. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer, establishing roll call and quorum for today. We have President Good, Vice President Garcia, President Pro Tem Davis, and Commissioners Caloza and Viegas. President Good, you do have a quorum. For the record, all commissioners are dialing in remotely. We have President Good, Commissioner Caloza, and Commissioner Viegas that are dialing in from their city hall offices. All others are dialing in remotely from home. I myself, I'm dialing in remotely from home, and we're also joined by our city council. Our, our, our city attorney, our council, Mr. Ted Jordan, who's dialing in remotely as well. Mr. President, at this time, we currently have one caller on the line under general public comment. We also receive two public comments received through our Google comment form and also a comment form through our Google form on item number six, which will be distributed to all commissioners momentarily via email. Again, one caller for general public comment and then three comments through the Google form that will be sent to your commission in the next few seconds. We do not currently have any commentary under the neighborhood council comment section, and we do not have any callers for any of the items for the regular agenda items. Okay, um, why don't we go ahead, um, we will, uh, uh, we'll take minutes and uh, take the minutes and then um, uh, we'll do general public comment. Um, uh, so actually, why don't we just go ahead and do uh, public comment. Um, so. Uh, why don't you set that up, Dr. Cummings? Yeah, absolutely, Mr. President. The Board of Public Works is now considering general public comment for Wednesday, June 9th, 2021. We do have one caller on the line, Mr. Williams. If you can please unmute your microphone by pressing star six at this time, you'll be given two minutes to speak on, under general public comment. Good morning, Dr. Tom Williams, LA 32 Neighborhood Council Director and President of the Citizens Coalition for a Safe Community and several other organizations. Now, uh, on Nextdoor and on Facebook, there's a video of a supposed city operation at the corner of Maycrest and Huntington Drive and Huntington Drive North. It shows a contractor trying to use powered equipment on a city street with people hanging on to the powered equipment. No barriers were up, no fencing was up, no flagman or anything else was around. So we're quite suspicious of these two videos, the same video, different cropping, because it puts the contractor for doing the landscaping on the median of Huntington Drive in very bad view. The contractor or the employee operating the heavy equipment is grossly in violation of Cal OSHA and endangered people of the general public who actually put their hands on the powered equipment while the operator had it on supposedly. So we're quite concerned about your landscaping contract, or I say uh, add-on, from the Valley Boulevard project to Huntington Median, and I think you should have somebody investigate the videos that are on Nextdoor and Facebook with regard to how it puts the city of LA and the Department of Public Works in very bad light. So, Somebody should get on it. It doesn't look right. There's no attribution as to who okay. did it and when and such like that. So that's all. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Um, Dr. Campos, do we have uh, a uh, rep from VCA here? I do not see a representative from the Bureau. Actually, George Espindola. Oh, yes, 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 I'm here. Good, Good morning, morning. Mr. There, Espindola. Morning. there he is. Good morning, Mr. Espadilla. Um, it'd be great if you would, uh, if you could um, uh, potentially follow follow up on the callers, uh, what we heard from the caller uh, just now. Sure, no problem. We can, we'll be more than happy to do that. What was the, the intersection or, or the uh, uh, job address? If you can repeat that for me. Uh, 
Mr. Spindola, we'll go ahead and get that information. I, we'll we'll go back and, and I, add. I can provide. Well, Makerest and Huntington Drive North. It was actually violations on Huntington Drive North between Lowell and Makerest. Great, thank you. We'll, we'll investigate and we'll, we'll send a report to the board. Thank, thank you. you. You have my contact. Thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Um, okay. Uh, with that, let's go to the minutes. Um, we have minutes from Wednesday, May 19th, 2021, and from Thursday, May 20th, uh, 2021, our special meeting. Um, can I have a motion to approve those minutes? Okay. Um, I've got uh, Viegas on the motion, seconded by Davis. Any questions or concerns? Garcia, Colosa. All right, hearing none, the, uh, the minutes from Wednesday, May 19th, 2021, and Thursday, May 20th, 2021, um, are uh, both adopted uh, and approved forthwith. Um, let's now go to item number one. Item number one is for projects in CD 1 and 13, budget increase and revised construction budget, First Street Viaduct over Glendale Boulevard project, bridge number 53C-005, federal project number um, BHLS-50061070. I'm recommending the board authorize 175,000 in additional contingency and approve a revised construction budget of $12,013,144.73 for the First Street Viaduct over Glendale Boulevard project work order E7. 00001F. Um, who do we have to present today that to help us? Mr. Shirley? Hi, Shirley. Hi, Ms. Lau. Yes, good morning, President Good and board members. Uh, Shirley Lau with the Bureau of Engineering and Bridge Improvement Division. The First Street Viaduct is uh, located nor uh, northwest of downtown Los Angeles and spans over Glendale Boulevard below. And it's approximately 974 feet long and 51 feet wide. It carries four lanes of traffic. The purpose of the project was to correct geometric deficiencies, address the seismic vulnerabilities, and also preserve the viaduct's historic status. Uh, the project retrofitted all the bents, uh, the bent columns, as well as reinforcing all the foundations by drilling 28 new piles that were over 60 feet deep into the ground. Preservation of the viaduct's railing also required a licensed architectural historian who inspected the removed historic railing and then worked closely with the contractor on the restoration. We also corrected the geometric deficiencies by reconfiguring the transverse and longitudinal profile on the bridge deck. Um, at the end of the project, a 55-hour closure was required at the intersection of Glendale Boulevard and 2nd Street, and with that's below the viaduct. Uh, which involved removing the temporary traffic signals and installing all new traffic signal elements to allow for the integrated five-way intersection to be fully functional. Uh, so during the 55-hour closure, LADOT required the contractor to provide adjustments to the work in the field, um, as well as provide additional traffic control. Uh, the contractor subsequently claimed additional costs associated with the traffic control some demolition, saw cutting, trenching um, for this new traffic signal system installation. Uh, the contractor submitted a change order request and also the backup documentation that provided the additional costs incurred for their labor materials used during that closure and it's being verified by the Bureau of Engineering and Bureau of Contract Administration. BOE does find uh, merit to this claim and requests additional contingency in the amount of uh, 80000 pending verification of all the contractor's documentation. Um, during the historic preservation uh, efforts for the railing, um, sections of the removed historic rail that required reset and replication uh, were more than the original bid amount due to additional rails that were found to be deteriorated while we were in construction. The original bid quantity so was underestimated. Uh, and as such, additional contingency of the amount of 95,000 uh, is requested to be used for the big quantity adjustments for the historic rail preservation. 
So for these two items, the total amount of additional contingency requested is a not to exceed amount of 175,000. Um, the Bureau of Engineering is seeking Caltrans reimbursement for this additional work and the big quantity adjustment. The project is complete and was accepted by the Bureau of Contract Administration on March 21st, 2021. Bridge deck is fully functional, is open to two lanes of traffic in each direction, and the intersection beneath the bridge is fully restored with new striping signals and is open to traffic. So this project is funded by the Federal Highway Bridge Program and also the state's Proposition 1B program, and so there's no impact on the general fund. The Bureau requests the board approval for the recommendations set forth in this report. That concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Lau. Um, colleagues, we have questions. Uh, Vice President Garcia. Thank you, President Good. Good morning, uh, Shirley. Uh, good to see you. Uh, good report. I don't have any questions. You did a good job explaining everything. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Um, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and thank you, Ms. Lau, for your report. It was really thorough. Just a point of clarification here. Um, I understand that BOE does find merit for the claims for additional contingency. I'm I'm wondering if um, if you could just shed a little bit of light on this. You're saying that uh, some of the eighty thousand dollar contingency, it's just pending verification. Um, you know, just to see additional documents from the contractor. Is that correct? I'm wondering why isn't the um, why don't we get that verification first before it comes to the board? Yes, yeah, sometimes we are matching up the original cost with the additional cost that is incurred. So there's quite a bit of documentation that we look at, basically the labor, additional labor that was used, and also the um, additional materials used. So the contractor has to provide a lot of the documentation. So they do have it here. Um, we are reviewing it. It's just uh, requires some time to look over it. But um, in general, we are uh, in alignment with um, DOT's, I guess, changes that were performed during the closure, which was unanticipated. And we do find merit in the contractor's claim. So we just wanted to provide additional verification before we issue the change order. We wanted to come to the board. Okay, and is there um, an expediency um, for coming to the board? Is it need to be done quickly? Um, in order to issue the change order, we do need this additional contingency or else we cannot actually issue the change order. No, I understand that. Um, just wondering if the, um, and it, uh, I mean, it's, it's just process question. I wasn't sure if, uh, if you all needed to come, you know, first before, you know, documentation is verified. I didn't know. It just sounds to me that it, it was, um, there's, there's just a timeline, that's all. Right, we're trying to, we did verify it and we are continuing to just make that final verification while coming to the board. It's kind of concurrently, I would say. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you so much and thorough report. No more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Villegas. Uh, Vice President, or excuse me, uh, President Pro Tem Davis. Yes, Shirley, I just wanted to ask informational question. In terms of the additional work that we required them to do for the project, did we have to hire anybody additional in that effort for the extra task um, and the work that, that was done? Uh, yes, I believe the that's why there's um, additional labor costs incurred. We did have to, um, I, I, the contractor had to bring on additional staff in order for the closure um, that was adjusted during the 55 hour closure because um, as traffic was impacted when we shut down the entire intersection, DOT had the contractor adjust the traffic control and so that incurred costs and the contractor did have to bring on additional labor. Sure, and so that was another question I was gonna ask in terms of the, uh, the dynamics of the staffing changed a little bit. Do we know what the inclusion was on that? project in terms of business inclusion. This is a locally funded project. It's not a federally funded project, correct? Um, yeah, actually, this is a, a federally funded bridge project. Oh. So we were following the disadvantaged business enterprise um, 
uh, program. And so the contractor had uh, did a pledged 8.42% uh, disadvantage, disadvantaged business enterprise um, on the original award um, board report. And I will work with uh, the Bureau of Contract Administration to make sure that, you know, obviously they met the goal. And if they exceeded it while you know, we had change order work, uh, and additional work that was Oh, good. So they did, they did exceed the work. They got their, their a, pledge. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay, good. So we don't routinely, in terms of reporting, when we come back for uh, a change order, we don't usually include that information in our report, do we? Uh, that is correct. Okay. We have not included it. Okay. Great. Well, I, uh, aside from that, thank you for that information and certainly support the motion and understand, you know, additional tasks being requested and required re, re, requires also additional resources. So thank you for a thorough report. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, President Clifton Davis. Uh, Commissioner Corson. Uh, thank you, President Good. I don't have any questions for Ms. Lau. She briefed me on this item, uh, but hopefully to provide a, a few additional context for um, Commissioner Viegas on your questions, which I think are really great ones. Um, the project completed uh, a few months ago in March. Um, and so this work has been completed and this will really help expedite us paying our contractor for work that they already performed and really paying those workers for that, that additional work that was required. Um, and it's a great project for those of you who drive into downtown uh, from the historic Filipino uh, side uh, of town and this expansion of two lanes to four lanes um, has been greatly needed and it is, um, you know, really helping improve the, the flow of traffic and I know it's a complicated uh, project uh, for, for Ms. Lau given the complexities if you've been in that area and the crisscross on, on Glendale there. But I uh, just wanted to add that additional context, but uh, thank you, Ms. Lau, for your work on this and, and the entire BOE uh, bridge program. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, thanks, Commissioner Closet. So, so the gist of we wanted to move this, I, I had the same process question as Commissioner Lee. So, so the, the, the gist is just to be able to expedite getting this paid out, getting whatever paid out. We're just increasing the contingency. So come back and the numbers lower per se, then that's what will be paid. It doesn't our our vote to expand the contingency does not dictate what the actual number will be based on the final review of invoices. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. This is a not to exceed. So BOE estimated roughly eighty thousand while we are confirming all their documentation. Okay, that, that makes sense. Um, does that get Get to your question, but yeah, um, I was having the, the same little uh, just trying to figure out procedurally what what what, what, the, what, the, what was happening there. So that makes sense. Um, thank you, Ms. Lau. Uh, as always, uh, that was uh, really helpful. And I'll take a motion to move the item forward. So moved. Thank you, Second. Seconded by President Proctor Davis. Viegas Garcia. Questions, epiphanies. All right, hearing none, the item is adopted uh, forthwith. Thank you very much, as always, Ms. Lau. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Okay, um, folks, let's go to item number two. Item number two uh, is um, a, a memorandum of agreement extension. Security Services of Los Angeles Police Department recommending board Approve the extension of the 2017-2020 Memorandum of Agreement between the Los Angeles Police Department and the Bureau of Sanitation for one year to December 31, 2021 to provide continued security services for the Bureau of Sanitation Water Reclamation Plant, Hyperion Water Reclamation Plant, Los Angeles Glendale Water Reclamation Plant, Donald T. Tillman Water Reclamation Plant, and Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant. All terms and conditions of the original MOA to remain in effect while a new MOA is being established for services beyond December 31, 2021. Um, is Mr. Taylor presenting for us today? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Gordon, for being Commissioner. I am Arnold Taylor, uh, Senior Management Analyst at Hyperion Water Reclamation Plant, and presenting the request for approval for the extension of the LAPD. LA SAN uh, Memorandum of Agreement 
this is an interim uh, agreement just to extend while we're working on the uh, new agreement uh, to establish. This extension will allow us to continue to have the essential security services that are provided by LAPD. They provide one sergeant, two senior security officers, and 24 full-time security officers who provide essential security services at the four uh, water reclamation plants, which uh, Commissioner Good mentioned, Hyperion, LA Glendale, DC Tillman, and Terminal Island. Some services that uh, LAPD provide is gate entry coverage, screening, logging of visitors, uh, deliveries, vendors, patrol, surveillance of our systems and alarms, monitoring, special event, parking and traffic. Uh, they uh, respond to accidents within the premises of, of the plant, uh, crime, provide security for the building and common areas, monitor any demonstrations around the plant and provide crime uh, incident report among other uh, essential services. We need the temporary agreement because uh, the new agreement is still being worked on. There are some new additions to the agreement that will be are being considered to add one senior su security uh, personnel to the new agreement. Uh, the extend the term to three years and one year extension, remove some redundancies in the current agreement and to add some overtime uh, for security services. So those are provisions in the new agreement that are being worked on, which is why we need time to uh, have those worked out between LA SAN and uh, LAPD. Uh, this agreement is funded by SEM, so it doesn't have any direct impact on the uh, general fund. LAPD does pay salaries out of general funds, but then it's, we reimburse through um, transfer uh, the financial management dis dis district at the beginning of the year will set aside funds to pay for security services for all of the plants and then it's uh, transferred monthly to LAPD and so and that's an automated process and then at the end of the year a reconciliation is done by the respective budget groups for LA SAN and LAPD and that's all I have. And Sergeant James Fonatak is here also if there are any questions regarding um, specific to security services. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Um, thanks for joining us, uh, uh, Sergeant Onthank. Um, <clears throat> colleagues, let's uh, open it up. Commissioner Viegas, any questions? Um, thank you. Um, appreciate your report, Mr. Taylor. Fight on. I love what you got in the background. <laughs> Um, I, I have a, um, just a, um, a quick question and just cause I worked in other local governments and security like this, um, for that I've seen, um, from other local governments, they usually outsource it, um, you know, to security companies. Um, just wondering if you guys have thought about that in the past, um, I don't need to like open up a can of worms here or make anybody feel uncomfortable. I'm just asking, um, just as something that I've noticed, that's all. We've done that on only on emergency basis when um, we had to supplement LAPD security, for example, if we had a special event on um, the weekend, then we had to bring in uh, outside security services. But I believe it's preferable to have uh, professional LAPD security services because they're city employees and that's their um, specialty. So we want to keep it within the city. So I think that's the priority to keep those services within the city. But yes, we have on occasion several years ago hired contract supplemental security. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Villegas. Um, uh, Commissioner Colosa. Uh, thank you, President Good, and thank you for your report, Mr. Taylor, and nice to see you, uh, Sergeant on thank. Um, I just had a question about um, the timeline. I saw that this expired six months ago in 2016. Um, can you walk us through what happened and why we're seeing this six months after the contract expired? Well, they have to go through, I don't know if, um, 
Sergeant, if you want to jump in on that and talk about the um, process. We basically met probably about um, nine, ten months ago at this point, and um, between us and LA Sand, and it's been going through the process and working its way up through fiscal operations on the LAPD side and also through the LA Sand side. And at this point, it's in our side, it's at fiscal operations that we're working with uh, LA Sand at this point to close some loose ends. I guess I would like to hear from you, Mr. Taylor. Why is this delay coming to us? I guess I'm just trying to get a more direct answer. Well, it's the new provisions have to be approved. The new provisions in the new agreement have to be approved by uh, LA San and agreed upon by LAPD. So that's the cause of the delay to get to work those things out, um, specifically in terms of hiring an additional uh, senior uh, officer, whether or not um, the responsibility for vehicles would be LA San or LAPD. So those are some of the issues that are have been taking some time to work out for the new agreement. So this is not the new agreement, right? This is an extension. No, this is an extension of the current, which is why we have to have the extension. Yes, you're correct. Right, but I'm asking why is this extension late? Because it expired six months ago, right? That's what I'm asking. I'm not asking about the new contract. I'm asking oh, I understand. about the extension. We have to, the, there are several um, approvals we have to get before we can present before the board. We have to go through, um, get approval by from LA San Executive Office. It gets um, uh, reviewed by director. Um, so those are some of the steps we have to get approved before we get approval to present to the board. I understand all that. So I'll just follow mm -hmm. up. Ms. O, is that you trying to chime in? Yes, Commissioner. Uh, um, my name is Mihe O, and I'm senior. I am a tool at um, Hyperion um, admin section. And the reason uh, for the delay was initially we were trying to get the uh, the full uh, memorandum um, work done um, as soon as we, uh, the prior uh, year um, contract um, ended. But however, because of the delay with the um, getting the contract ready, we decided to go ahead with the extension of one year. And uh, with the pandemic and all that, it seems <laughs> uh, a bit long to actually get the uh, uh, extension um, done. But we did uh, try to expedite it as, as fast as we could. And uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, there wasn't anything that kind of hold us back just that uh, it took a while to get all the information, uh, get the um, attorneys approved, uh, the extension and things like that, and get the financial data and going through the um, um, word um, PRD uh, approved and all that. It took this long. So uh, there is no real reason behind why it, it took this long, it's just uh, kind of, um, so it took this like long. It sounds like what you're saying, Ms. O, is that you were originally hoping to have a new contract in place that was coming before board. And since that was not yes. possible, you decided to move forward with an extension instead. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, I would have yes. appreciated if that's what, Mr. Taylor, you would have just said in the in the beginning of that, what was going on, um, and just get a, a clear, straight transparent answer um you know i understand that and that's why i was just wondering because this is not you know it's not an insignificant contract it's a five million dollar contract protecting some of our critical infrastructure and assets that la san has right and so that's why i, I was asking the question um thank you miss O, for for your answers and um uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we can avoid situations like this in, in the future. And I understand that it's been a really tough year with a lot of um, complicated financial impacts uh, citywide. So I, I get what happened um, and I understand, but just, you know, if you can just be transparent about what exactly transpired that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mia. Yeah, hey, I just wanted to mention uh, uh, Mr. Taylor will join uh, actually later at the end of the uh, this uh, extension. That's why probably he didn't have the information that uh, we had. So um, I would like to actually <laughs> mention that uh, probably Mr. Taylor didn't have all the information that we had. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. I, I, I understand the, the need for transparency and uh, clarity, so I appreciate your question. Thank you. All right. Um, are there any other questions, Commissioner Closa? I'm good. Thank you. Um, President Pro Tem Davis? Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Taylor, I wanted to ask you, this contract was really implemented back in 2017 is our first memorandum of understanding with the department. What happened in terms of protecting the facilities prior to that? What was the old arrangement prior to us engaging in this, this arrangement? Do you happen to know? I don't have specific um, okay. information on the agreement before that. So. Well, obviously, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I don't want to speculate. I believe we had a, um, an agreement uh, prior to the 2017 agreement. Yes. Uh, Sergeant, can you confirm or not? So with all honesty, um, I don't have the correct answer to that. I know that okay. we, were put in place, we were put in place because this is a critical infrastructure. And to answer... Um, I think it was Ms. Viegas' question. Uh, there's a there's quite a bit of difference between, with all due respect, between um, the uh, the security we have here that are trained and post certified versus um, the level of uh, service I can provide with uh, general service general con or um, security guards, which we use on occasion as necessary. Um, but before that. We were put in place originally because they did a threat assessment of this location and they wanted professional security in this place. If right. that makes any sense. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Taylor, yeah. I, I, think that, that. I think that uh, there's a reason why in 2017 we put together this agreement. Obviously, we were seeking something that would provide us a little more comprehensive security it's inevitable that this was the reason for doing it because if we were satisfied prior to 2017 with what we had we wouldn't put together what we have so i realized what we have and obviously uh i will ask the question in terms of the performance that we had in this agreement from 2017 how would you paraphrase it in terms of what we have been able to receive from the work that we have experienced so far to your knowledge? Well, I can tell you that um, the security services provide um, a sense of security for staff, visitors. So uh, if I'm going to par paraphrase their services, it's excellent. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, from entering the gate, securing the plant facilities um, from dealing with uh, violence issues on the plant. Um, I can tell you that I myself was received, if you parked in the wrong spot, you receive a little white card to say, mm -hmm. this is not your parking spot. So from traffic mm -hmm. to parking to dealing mm -hmm. with serious threats and personnel issues, I would characterize the service as excellent and not as uh, uh, the sergeant has mentioned, it's above contractor level security guard service. These are professional that's what I, security experts. That's what I thought, but I didn't want to make any assumptions. So it's good to know that we have job satisfaction, uh, yeah, we have uh, satisfa service satisfaction with those with whom we are engaged in this relationship. And we understand from a management perspective that negotiations can be more complex than oftentimes we anticipate and that oftentimes we also can't necessarily predict when we can come to a conclusion on negotiations, whether it's with the union or another vendor or not, but we certainly hope that we will be able to, in the existing, in the existing time that you've required, uh, that we will be able to land this plane, if you will, 
and move forward with a permanent contract, particularly since we are satisfied with the service that is provided. So uh, I thank you for giving me that feedback. Uh, I think it's critically important. And, and, and uh, with the school in the background of your <laughs> office, I knew that I could count on you for that kind of accuracy. So thank you so much uh, for your report. Thank you for your comments and thank you for all the comments. I take them as instructive to be more um, prepared for these type of meetings, even if I wasn't involved in the um, process at the beginning to, um, I, I take all the questions as constructive to uh, be more prepared in the future. Well, certainly, certainly collaboration is a part of the work we do in management. You have to coll collaborate to get the kind of results that you seek to have because one manager can't be everywhere. So uh, again, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, President Putnam Davis. Um, Vice President Garcia. Thank you, President Good. Uh, Mr. Taylor, good job on um, on being here and presenting. Even though uh, you you know you didn't have probably the background information, but you're still doing a great job. Um, I'm gonna uh, uh, follow along with my colleagues. Yay on the USC background. <laughs> that, gives you, that gives you like a hundred points here, by the way. <laughs> Um, so thank you for that. And uh, Mr. Ontang, thank you so much for working with this um, contract. You know, these are really important areas that your your team really secures for us during the weekends, during the nights, and during the time. It really keeps our employees safe. So thank you for that. I personally um, seen you in action. Well, not you specifically, but your team in action out in the Tillman area. And uh, you guys do a great job making sure that that area is kept um safe and secure when it's not occupied. So thank you for that. I don't have any questions, President Good. I think my colleagues have um, asked all the questions that I wanted to know as well. So thank you. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Um, and uh, I would echo that. Um, I don't have any questions, Mr. Taylor, Sergeant Cohn, thank you. Um, and uh, uh, I mean, I, I agree with, you know, it's, to the degree possible, it's better to not have items come um, when it's so much after the fact and we're six months into to the to the to the MOA. Um, but uh, uh, understood. So, um, do I have a motion to move the item forward? So moved. Thank you, President Clinton Davis. Do I have a second? I second that. Oh, uh, I think that was Viegas. Did I get Viegas? It was. It was me and Viegas. Either one. Okay, so I got two seconds, Fernando. Um, Viegas and uh, Vice President Garcia, um, questions or concerns, Commissioner Closa? All right, hearing none, uh, the item is adopted forthwith. Thank you all very much. Have a great thank day. You. And thank you, Ms. O. For thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's move on, folks, uh, to items. Um, Let's move to uh, item uh, three, and then I know, well, I'd like to take items three, four, and five together, although I know that um, Mr. Flamenco, you said that we, I believe that we need to amend uh, uh, the titles on four and five. Does that prevent us, Dr. Campos, from taking um, three, four, and five together and just amending in the journal and the titles? Great question, Mr. President, the Campos Executive Officer. This does not prohibit the board to take all three items together. Mr. Flamingo will read into the record what the proper uh, title should be on the agenda. It does not impact the board report that's before you or the action that the board will take. So therefore you can take three, four, and five. Okay. And we will make the adjustments and revisions to the journal. So I'll go ahead and read three, four, and five into the record. And then Mr. Flamingo, you can read the, the, the requested adjustments um, and then we'll have the uh, have any discussion among the, uh, the board, okay? Sure. All right. So item three, um, everybody, uh, everybody uh, keep your popcorn. Um, item three, um, CD all annual assessment uh, for street lighting maintenance and operation for 2021-22, Los Angeles City Lighting District assessments and district pros since 1996, recommending the board consider any protest or appeals and notify the outcome uh, to the Los Angeles City Council for consideration to its scheduled hearing on June 15th, 2021. City Council notice of intent um, 5 14 2021 
Council File 21-0549, City Council Hearing 615-2021, Reference uh, BPW-2021-0307. Item number four, Annual Assessment for Street Lighting Maintenance and Operations in 2021-22, Los Angeles City Lighting District, Assessments and District Closing since 1996, recommending the board consider any protests or appeals and notify the outcome to the Los Angeles City Council for consideration in its scheduled hearing on June 15, 2021. City Council Notice of Intent, 5-14-2021, Council File 21-0558, City Council Hearing 6-15-2021, um, reference BPW-2021-0308. Item five, finally, um, annual assessment for street lighting maintenance and operations for 2021-22, Los Angeles City Lighting District assessments and district closing since 1996, recommending the board uh, consider any protests or appeals and notify the outcome to the Los Angeles City Council for consideration to the scheduled hearing on June 15, 2021. City Council notice of intent, 514-2021, Council file, 21-0544, City Council Hearing 615-2021, um, referral uh, or reference number uh, BPW-2021-0309. Um, Mr. Flamenco from BSL, good morning. Good morning. Ruben Flamenco from the Bureau of Street Lighting. The title on today's agenda for item three is correct. The title for item four should read annual assessments for street lighting maintenance and operation for 2021 22 1996 1997 z series street lighting maintenance assessment district and the title for item five on today's agenda should read annual assessments for street lighting maintenance and operation for 2021 22 proposition 218 confirmed street lighting maintenance assessment district as fernando mentioned the board reports and the ordinance of intentions are correct and require and do not require any revisions items three four and five pertain to the annual assessments for street lighting maintenance and operation for the 2021 2022 fiscal year on may 14th 2021 the board adopted our board reports and ordinances of intention for these three items on june 1st 2021 the city council adopted our ordinance of intention for these three items so that the required protest hearing may be scheduled today at the board and next tuesday june 15th at city council confirmation of the assessments by july 31st 2021 is necessary for the county of los angeles to accept and include our assessments for collection on the 2021 2022 property tax bills approval of items three four and five will result in assessment revenue of approximately 45 million seven hundred eighty seven thousand to the street lighting maintenance assessment fund for the upcoming 2021-2022 fiscal year. Notably, item three, the Los Angeles City Lighting District, rates frozen since 1996 with no inflation index, consisting of approximately 509,507 parcels, $42,124,040. Item four, the 1996-1997 Z-Series Street Lighting Maintenance Assessment District, rates frozen since 1997 with no inflation index consisting of approximately 1,612 parcels $114,468 item 5 the prop 218 confirmed street lighting maintenance assessment district rates unfrozen with an inflation index consisting of approximately 37,110 parcels $3,548,492 the individual maintenance assessments for the 37,710 parcels in item five are increased by 1.62%, which is the consumer price index for the Los Angeles, Long Beach, and Anaheim cities for the 2020 calendar year as determined by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This increase is for lighting districts created post-1996, post the passage of Proposition 218. For reference, the CPI for the 2019 calendar year was 3.07%, and for 2018, the CPI was 3.81%. We have not received any objections to date on items 3, 4, 5. Again, we are requesting for the board to adopt these three items 
and forward them forthwith to City Council. Upon adoption of these three items, City Council may then vote to confirm the assessments and adopt a final ordinance ordering that the street lighting maintenance assessments for the 2021-2022 tax year be levied. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flamenco. Um, appreciate it very much. Uh, questions, colleagues? President Pro Tem Davis? Any questions, uh, Mr. Uh, President? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I was talking and my mute was on. I apologize. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, no questions. No questions for me. Good report, Mr. Flamenco. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, Commissioner Closer. Uh, thanks, President Good. Uh, no questions for me. Thank you for your report, Mr. Flamenco. Thank you, Commissioner Closa. Um, uh, uh, Commissioner Vegas. I too have no questions, and thank you for your report. Thank you, and Vice President Garcia. Um, I don't have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Flamenco. Like always, I appreciate your report. It's very thorough. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. No questions, just comment. This is kind of an important item for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, all right, thank you. Um, I, ha I don't have any questions either. Thanks, Ruben. Uh, I will, or I do have a motion um, from Vice President Garcia to move the item, items, items three, four, and five. Yes, sir, so I move items three, four, and five. Thank you, do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Commissioner Villegas. Any concerns, Colosa or Davis? All right, hearing none, um, items three, four, and five are adopted forthwith. Dr. Campos will um, make the um, necessary uh, uh, adjustments in the titles for the um, agenda and the uh, Board of Public Works Journal. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Flamenco. Thank you. Have a great day. Good luck on the day. Likewise. Taken would require a subsequent EIR or supplemental EIR. Three, adopt January 20, 2012, mitigation monitoring and reporting program, chapter, chapter eight of the final EIS EIR, and appendix three, memorandum of agreement prepared by the Metro as it pertains to construction impacts. Four, find the CEQA guidelines section 15091 that changes have been incorporated into the project, which substantially lessens the significant environmental effects as identified in the final EIS EIR. Further, find that there is no feasible alternative or additional feasible mitigation measures within the board's powers that would substantially lessen any significant effect the project would have on the environment. Five, <clears throat> adopt the attached CEQA findings of fact and statement of overriding considerations as it pertains to the temporary street closure and find that the economic, social, technological, and other benefits of the project outweigh its significant and unavoidable impacts. Six, specify that the Metro Transit Division of the Bureau of Engineering located at 1149 South Broadway, the board located at 200 North Spring Street, and other relevant City of Los Angeles departments are custodians of the documents or other material which constitute the record of the proceedings upon which the board's decision is made. Or based seven approve the request to temporarily close Flower Street between Fifth Street and Wilshire Boulevard for 20 
58-hour weekends starting Friday at 7 p.m. and ending Monday at 5 a.m. For the following weekend, subject to the conditions identified in the, within this report, A, from June 11 to June 14, 2021, B, from June 18 to 20, June 21, 2021, C, from June 25 to June 28, 2021, D, from July 9 to July 12, 2021, E, from July 16 to July 19, 2021, F, from July 23 to July 26, 2021, G, from July 30 to August 2, 2021, H, from August 6 to August 9, 2021, I, from August 13 to August 16, 2021, J from August 20 to August 23, 2021. K from August 27 to August 30, 2021. L from September 10 to September 13, 2021. M from September 17 to September 20, 2021. N from September 24 to September 27, 2021. O from October 1 to October 4, 2021. P from October 8 to October 11, 2021. Q from October 15 to October 18, 2021. R from October 22 to October 25, 2021. S from October 29 to November 1, 2021. T from November 5 to November 8, 2021. And eight, authorize the city engineer and the director of the Bureau of Street Services to administratively approve an extension of additional, two additional weekends beginning Friday, November 12, 2021, and ending Monday, November 22, 2021, if unforeseen conditions are encountered, which may delay the completion of this construction. Work order E190739-4. Um, I believe Larry Shu is with us uh, from the Bureau of Engineering, along with uh, Matt Antonelli and Olga Arroyo from Metro, in case we have questions of Metro. Um, Mr. Shu. Please proceed and don't do this to me again. That was a long. That was brutal. Um, thank you, uh, President Good. Uh, this is Larry Shu with Bureau of Engineering, Metro Transit Division. The Metro Regional Connector Project is a 1.9 mile underground light rail uh, project that will extend from the new uh, Little Tokyo Arts District Station to the 7th Street uh, Metro Center uh, Station and includes three, three stations, the Little Tokyo Arts District, Historic Broadway, and Grand Avenue Arts Bunker Hill Station. The street closure request is one in a series of street closures as the Regional Connector Project team completes underground work, backfills excavations, and restores city streets. Uh, this Regional Connector is scheduled to reach uh, revenue service in the fall of 2022. On February 26th, the board authorized a uh, temporary street closure of Flower Street between 4th and 5th Street for 13 weekends beginning uh, March 26th, 2021 and ending uh, July 12th, 2021. Uh, this, this work, the work in this previously approved closure uh, is anticipated to be completed approximately a month earlier, earlier than um, scheduled and reopened to weekend traffic. The current request is to facilitate street restoration work as the project team continues south along Flower. Metro and their contractor, the Regional Connector Constructors, RCC, are requesting to temporarily close temporarily close um, Flower Street between 5th and Fifth Street and Wilshire Boulevard for 20 58 hour weekends, each starting on Friday at 7 p.m. and ending Monday at 5 a.m. beginning June 11th and ending November 8th, 2021. Uh, holiday weekends, the holiday weekends of Independence Day, Labor Day um, are excluded from this request and the last weekend in this request, uh, November uh, 5th through 8th, uh, will not be used due to the LA Marathon, which is scheduled for Sunday, uh, November 7th. As part of this request, the recommendation number eight authorizes the city engineer and director of uh, Bureau, Bureau of Street Services uh, to administratively approve two additional weekends uh, street closures beginning um, November 22nd. If unforeseen conditions delay the completion of this uh, construction. The work uh, applied during this closure is for the removal of concrete decking and support structure, backfill, uh, utility relocation, and pavement restoration associated with the cut and cover construction of the guideway along uh, Flower Street. Final, re final street restoration will require additional lane closures. Major submittals associated with this closure have been approved by BOE. 
and there are no unresolved um, notices of non-compliance issued by BCA. The uh, worksite traffic control plan identifies traffic impacts to access and access concerns to the California Club, the Standard, um, the Library, and the uh, City National Plaza loading zones and driveways, and the Pacific Financial Center parking garage driveway. At the time when the report was written, the worksite traffic control plan was pending. However, it has since been approved by DOT. As part of this request, staff from the Bureau of Engineering's um, Environmental Management Division re reviewed the environmental documentation for Metro and generated a memo attached to this report, which summarizes the impacts and mitigation measures associated with this closure. Metro Construction Relations have uh, informed the public of this planned closure through stakeholder briefings and community meetings. Stakeholders for this closure, in closure area include the Regional Connector Community Leadership Council, the Bonaventure Hotel, 44, sorry, 444 South Flower, the Pegasus Apartments, the City National Plaza, the California Club, the World Trade Center, the Bank of America Plaza, the Central Library, um, Silverstein Properties, and the Charles Benz Company. We are not aware of any community objections to this request. Uh, City Council District 14 has also communicated its support of this request. That concludes my report. We have staff from DOE, Contractor RCC available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Um, all right. Uh, this is uh, an extensive uh, closure. We appreciate um, um, having the Metro folks here uh, and the contractor as well um, for the board. We have uh, uh, I'm going to take some liberty of um, introducing Mr. Antonelli, who is the new um, project project manager, what's the official? Project manager. Thank you, Matt. Um, um, the new project manager, um, the, the uh, uh, terrific Gary Baker um, left big shoes, but in my um, uh, limited estimation thus far, Mr. Antonelli has got big feet, so um, he's going to do a great job. So um, uh, thanks for joining us, Matt, and always Olga, um, great to have you here as well. Colleagues, any questions starting off with Vice President Garcia? Thank you, President Good, and uh, congratulations. <clears throat> uh, Larry, good report, like always, super long, but thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for bringing it also a couple days before the actual closure. So thank you for working on that. And Mr. Antonelli, congratulations. Um, I really uh, look forward to working with you and look for, forward to, um, you know, taking some tours out there with you as well. So we'll make that happen. Um, I, don't, I don't, I have one question actually. And it's always the same question I ask. Um, have you guys made the appropriate accommodations for the businesses so that they can continue to operate during uh, all these weekends that you will be closing? Because it goes all the way up to basically November. So somebody from the Metro team can answer me that? I, I can address that if that's okay with you, Matt. Yeah, uh, Olga Royo uh, with Metro Community Relations. Uh, the answer to your question, Commissioner, is yes. We've been working with the businesses along Flower Street who would be open on the weekend uh, because these closures are starting uh, 7 p.m. Friday night through 5 a.m. on Monday. There's uh, a handful of businesses that would be affected by this closure. And the handful of businesses that will be open, we've been coordinating with them, ensuring that they have uh, access uh, to their loading zone if they're operating or any uh, pickup areas already established. Uh, so far, the businesses are satisfied with the communication we've had with them as it relates to this closure. Thank you, Ms. Arroyo. I appreciate that answer. I also want to know if there's been proper outreach to the public transportation community, knowing if there's going to be an impact on that. Uh, yes, we uh, work closely with Metro Bus Operations, who in return coordinates with other municipalities who have services on this corridor. Uh, they have been informed of the dates and the closure limits, uh, so they have that information in advance so that they can plan for their service. Um, my question specifically for residents, residents that uh, rely on public transportation and they have to go to work, are, are you able to reach out to, the, to those residents and make sure that they know there's an impact in their travel? 
Yes, uh, we do work closely with the property managers for the residential uh, buildings along the corridor and throughout the alignment. Uh, the information is uh, made available also on social media through the regional connector handle as well as through metro.net. And so for transit riders, uh, they know exactly where to get the information on any detours or bus stop relocation as needed. And I suspect that uh, it's also in Spanish, right? Yes, uh, the Metro.net website uh, has the capability of translating all the information to any desired language that is off offered by uh, Google.com. Okay, oh, uh, that's it for me for now. Thank you uh, for the LA, to the LA Metro team. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Um, President Pro Tem Davis. Mike, you're muted. Here we go, yeah. Okay, it looks like most of the T's are crossed and the, dot, the I's dotted, but I wanted to ask in terms of outreach, the council office, I don't know, is this the 14th district? Yes. That's, okay, Did they, were they involved in the effort to help you, Larry, as it relates to communicating with the various stakeholders? Um, yeah, we have a confirmation uh, that they uh, support this closure, um, I'm sure, uh, uh, Olga could probably provide more information in terms of their, their direct communications and, and coordination with CD14. Olga, okay, would you like okay. to weigh in on that? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, Council District 14 is aware of the outreach efforts uh, deployed to support this request. Uh, they had similar inquiries as the ones raised uh, by commissioners to this point in the briefing. Uh, they wanted to get confirmation from Metro that we were speaking with stakeholders, that we had means of communicating with residents, and that we have a mechanism to get the word out to commuters as they drive into the area. And so we have uh, addressed all these uh, items of interest uh, to the satisfaction of Council District 14, uh, and they have provided their concurrence for this closure. Great. Well, thank you. That was my only inquiry, and uh, I support the motion. It looks like you have certainly done a great job in, in terms of planning uh, for the implementation of this of these closures. Thank you. Thank you, President Pro Tem Davis. Thanks, Olga. Um, Commissioner Villegas. Hi, thank you. Appreciate uh, your report, Larry, Mr. Um, Chu, and then uh, thank you for Metro staff for joining us today actually had similar questions as uh, Commissioner Garcia asked, so I don't have any further questions. I'm glad you're working with the businesses. Um, and thank you for calling them out um, on the report. It's just a lot of transparency. I don't have any questions, thanks. Thanks, Commissioner. Um, Commissioner Colosa. Thank you, President Good. Um, I don't have any questions for Mr. Shu. Thank you for your report and for um, letting uh, President Good practice his uh, reading skills <laughs> for these closures. Um, uh, I just want to, you know, note that these closures are extensive and that, you know, they are happening during a critical time when the state is reopening on June 15th. That said, I know that uh, Metro um, has been trying as best as possible to work around major events happening, like we heard with LA Marathon. So I appreciate um, the flexibility in working with um, large events like that that are, you know, very historic to the city and something that I know a lot of people are, are waiting for given that we didn't have um, too many events in the past year. Um, so I don't have any, you know, further questions on that piece. The other, the only last thing I'll note is Mr. Uh, Shu, uh, if you can just let me know uh, if you and um, Streets LA do end up using that contingency of those additional weekends that we added in just in case. Um, please do let me know. Um, that's uh, something that, you know, we've been adding in most recently to some of our closers just in case they're needed. And so there's not a last minute rush to come back to board for an additional weekend, but I would like to be notified if we do use them. Um, but nothing else for me. Thank you, uh, Ms. Arroyo, for your time, and welcome, Mr. Antonelli, um, to, to the team. Thank you. We'll do that, that uh, Commissioner Closa. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Closa. Um, and uh, I would echo that. I would also like to be aware if, if we um, exercise that contingency and um, 
do also appreciate uh, the, um, uh, the, the the outreach effort, and because um, this yeah, these, this is a meaningful set of closures, but um, this is this is a moment for the project, right, Mr. Antonelli um, and uh, Ms. Arroyo. So uh, uh, we we just look forward to working um, in concert, um, as we've all talked about before. So, um, and yes, thank you, Larry, for um, helping me polish up on my, uh, my my reading skills. I appreciate that. Uh, for the for for everyone's edification, um, I you know I do feel it's important that I read everything into the record, both for your entertainment, um, but also uh, uh, because particularly in, in the Zoom world, I think it, uh, the public it's important for the public to to, to hear the record out. So um, uh, thank you for that, um, Metro and Larry. Um, uh, so thanks for the great work on questioning. And um, I don't have any further questions, but I will. Presumptively, hopefully, from Commissioner Colosa, and uh, we'll move forward. So moved. Thank you. Um, do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Two seconds from Davis and Viegas. Any concerns or questions, uh, Vice President Garcia? All right, hearing none, uh, the uh, uh, item is adopted uh, forthwith. Item seven is adopted forthwith. Um, go get the closures done this Friday. Um, and, and what I'd like to do um, with my apologies uh, to our colleague, uh, uh, Director Segura, um, is go ahead and ask Metro to, I would like to move to item 10. Um, Metro is scheduled to give a um, project status update, transportation project status update. That way you guys can be done. Um, and uh, then we'll come back to item six. Was that uh, Matt and Olga again, or who's giving that presentation? Uh, I'm going to start uh, President Good. It's Sammy Galli. I'm executive, uh, uh, senior executive officer with LA Metro and responsible for the MEGA project. Thank you, sir. And welcome. So we start uh, one project at a time, but uh, just letting you know that our project has not stopped during COVID. In fact, in some instance, we took advantage of it to accelerate some of the construction. Two of the project will be done construction this year. The regional connector and the Crenshaw project will be done construction this year. And once we're done, we start our own testing that will take about five months before we put it in service. And uh, <clears throat> now, if you allow me, we'll start with uh, Matt for the regional connector. Matt, you can take it away. Thanks, Sammy. So as, uh, as was mentioned earlier, um, I, I am new to the project in a sense. I, I was on the project prior to, um, worked here for a few years and, and uh, I'll call it a leave of absence, but um, coming back to, to help finish the project and, excited to be here with all of you today. Um, so the regional connector, as was mentioned earlier by, by Larry, you know, we, we, uh, is about just under two miles long, uh, three new stations that are being constructed. Uh, the total budget here is just, a, just shy of $1.9 uh, billion. Our overall construction progress for the regional connectors is about 80%, 79-80%. Um, our design is complete. We are working on our station finishes, our systems, um, our uh, train systems installation and all of the, uh, the finishing touches to get this operational. Uh, currently our scheduled forecast is we are going to be finished construction by spring of next year and opening the, the fall of next year. Uh, we hope to have trains begin testing here in uh, sometime in the beginning of, the, of 2022. So it is a long process to get the trains tested and, and, and operational. Um, operations has obviously has a lot to do with that. So. Um, we are working hard to get the construction finished and, and uh, everything completed. So, uh, next slide, please. I'm going to walk uh, the group through different areas of the project, um, just giving overall updates. Um, this is looking at the Alameda leg, um, so the first Alameda intersection. As the trains leave our uh, Little Tokyo Art District Station and move north towards Union Station, um, we are seeing some exciting progress here. The picture on the left shows that. We're actually um, already backfilling a portion of the area, um, which is obviously great news. And the picture on the right um, shows the utilities through Temple Street. 
Uh, we have Temple Street that's closed right now through Alameda. We are working on the guideway getting underneath Temple Street. You can see the utilities over the top of the construction. Um, the work is progressing well. We are still targeting to open that on time and uh, contractors uh, focusing the efforts there to make sure that happens. Next slide, please. Moving on to the uh, second and Broadway area. Um, this is these pictures here are just noting that we are in our restoration phase um, of Second Street. This is the second and Broadway side of Second Street. Um, we have we have done some paving and some sidewalks uh, and curb and gutter along Second. Um, the work is still progressing on the other side towards Spring. We are still backfilling the area, um, still and still finishing backfilling around the utilities. Um, we. I'll discuss that a little bit more during our, my closure discussion, but the station construction overall is progressing pretty well. Um, we are, like I mentioned earlier, across the board, still looking at the train systems, train controls, a lot of that back, the back rooms, um, it's, and pulling conduits and cables. So most of the civil work is completed, um, and it's kind of transitioning to the next phase of the, the job. Um, we are, Olga's team is doing an outstanding job working with all the stakeholders, both in the Central and Broadway and Hope areas, um, making sure that they're well aware of our, all of our closures, everything that's going on, um, any, any constraints that are being, they're being discussed, and um, the work is progressing. Next slide. Moving on to our Grand Avenue Bunker Hill Station. Um, this, this work that I'm showing you here in these pictures is up on the surface. The picture on the left is the pedestrian bridge. So when this is done, this will be the entrance uh, going into the station, connecting to the Broad Museum. The, the pedestrian bridge is, um, as you can see, the, the superstructure is being worked on. The bridge deck is being being prepped. Um, the progress overall is pretty well. It, it, the, the bridge itself is coming together. Um, we're still working on the entrance structure into the station. Um, the station is in pretty good shape. We're, I said we're still working on the, the mechanical and the systems part of it, but as far as the civil construction, um, all, all the concrete is done and, and we're working there. Uh, we are doing the final touches on utilities. Um, this this project, just like any others, is, is a big utility job. Um, and over at Hope, uh, this is showing an eight-inch DWP water supply. We're doing comm lines and other other utilities in the area, um, and, and finishing everything up and hoping to uh, to open that soon. Next slide, please. This is a uh, picture of our Flower Street construction. Um, I appreciate the support for, for continuing this work along Flower Street. I think the, the fourth to fifth uh, section of Flower Street uh, was, was done very well. And, and as we mentioned earlier, we, we were able to finish a little bit early. Um, we, we are prepping the areas for final pavement to come back into, but right now we're backfilling and getting our base courses in um, through the intersection. So the next phase of work, as was mentioned earlier in the, in the, uh, the board meeting, uh, we're going to be focusing from 5th down, um, and it's going towards Wilshire. Um, like it was mentioned, it'll be uh, 20 weekends in a row. Uh, obviously, it's extensive work, but it is, it is something that is progressing pretty well. Um, we, we have been able to work through a lot of the issues, both engineering and stakeholder concerns. slide in here for the for the current closures and some extensions that we are going to be coming back for um, Hope Street right now as Ms. mentioned uh, we are in the works of, of getting DOE the, the information that's necessary um, we are going to need to extend that just a little bit um, we've been running into some issues with uh, stakeholders and working at night and it's kind of slowed some, some of the operations down so um, we will be coming back and, and trying to extend that just a, just a little bit uh, Fourth Street to Fifth Street is Street, 5th to Wilshire is what was approved today, so we appreciate that and thank you. Um, Second Street, uh, we are looking at a, an extension that's going to be needed for Second Street. Um, as I mentioned during the picture, the, we have backfilled and, and paved the Broadway side of the, of the um, construction area, but the Second and Spring area is, is still in construction. 
construction. Um, it, it's taken a little bit longer to backfill around the end of utilities. We have some AT&T issues. Um, I think that, that we're working out and working through right now. Um, but, but we'll expect that that's going to be needed to extend um, in July. So more, more information to come on that. And then I put in here First Street uh, westbound. Where we tie into the existing uh, gold line tracks, we, we are going to be needing a closure. This is something that's being worked on right now with DOT and DOE. Um, this will be a long-term closure. Uh, we'll have those working with the community on that as well um, to, to inform, inform them of that. But we need to tie our new tracks into the, uh, the existing tracks and tie in all the system work. So um, obviously that's a, a, a great part of the project because that means we're almost done. Give you a heads up of these closures and, and some of these requests that are going to be forthcoming, and I'm happy to take any questions if needed. Uh, go to the next slide. Um, so, as far as community relations and public outreach, Olga, as you can see, Olga's team's doing an outstanding job working with the community. Um, she's keeping up on her virtual meetings and making sure the public's informed of everything that we have going on, working with the key stakeholders. Um, and, and we continue to support the local businesses, um, our eat shop play program has been highlighting local businesses and along our alignment making sure that um, we're, we're getting them some recognition and, and working towards uh, promoting their businesses uh, while we're in construction. Next slide. And just our, uh, our business interruption fund updates. Um, you can see here where we're at right now as far as uh, our values that have been granted um, and uh, I don't have any, any additional information. Next. So I'm going to so that, that's it for regional. Um, uh, uh, President Good, I, I will report to you that I appreciated your time uh, that last week about meeting with us and some, some closure impacts. Um, I'll be happy to report to you that we had our first our first uh, go at the, in the new system and, and uh, we were able to work with MLA for this weekend's closure on Flower Street and, and uh, we were able to get them in touch with some of the stakeholders. So appreciate you and, and the mayor's office and everyone that was part of that meeting and coordinating. I think it was a a success and hopefully uh, continue the communication to move forward. Thanks, Matt. I really appreciate that. And obviously, uh, the door and the phone are always always here for you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions, President Good? I don't have any. That was thorough and it was great. Um, very excited. And, and uh, as we do get that opportunity, I wouldn't mind uh, uh, a, a little tour of some sort or anything you guys have to get going. Nothing extra, but just would love to. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be, uh, we'll schedule that with anyone that's, that's available. Great. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Right. So Thank you, Matt. French up. President, President Good can, sorry, LA Metro team, I wanted to just ask a question. I, I know that they're not, you're not completed with the Metro Regional Connector, but is there a way that we can get maybe uh, final renderings of what the stations will look like? I don't think I saw that on this. We, we don't. I, I could I could email those to you. Um, and we have we have we have renderings of each station that we can we can share. That would be great. Or or maybe on, I would appreciate the email. So I uh, thank you for that. And maybe on our next uh, board report, you can also show uh, what the stations are going to look like. We'll do. Thank you. And yeah, sorry about that, Vice President Garcia. I, I was kind of thinking we'd just take do questions at the end of the overall report, but you you asking that question does make sense. That, that way, Matt also doesn't have to uh, uh, stay. Are there any other questions, um, uh, Commissioner Viegas, on on regional connectors specifically? I don't have any other questions. I just like that you know some of this. Um, these uh, closures were able to save some time. I know on the Flower Street, it seems like we got some uh, time uh, given back to Metro. So I think it's probably just due to COVID, not as much uh, activity at the time, but uh, able to do more work there. I don't have any questions. I think your report's been really thorough. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, President Pro Tem Davis? Uh, no questions for me on the connector. Thanks for a thorough report. Thank you, sir. Um, Commissioner uh, No questions for me either. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Antonelli. You have a great day, okay? Thank you so much. Take care. All right. Mr. Gailey, we're back on. So we're moving to uh, the Crenshaw LX, and we have uh, Stephanie Leslie and Daniel Yu uh, to, pre to present uh, the presentation for you.
Um, good morning, my name is Daniel Yu. I am the Senior Director of Construction for the CLAX project. Um, I'm presenting on behalf of Stephanie Leslie, our Deputy Executive Officer. Uh, the CLAX project is an eight and a half mile uh, light rail project with eight stations with a project budget of roughly $2.1 billion. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here, some exciting advancements uh, on our project. Uh, this is Aviation Century Station. Uh, we have fair gate equipment that have been installed and protected from construction with plastic uh, on the left side. Uh, directing your attention to the back uh, blue uh, scissor lift, uh, we can see cladding being installed along the stairwell. Uh, now directing your attention to the right uh, with the blue uh, porcelain enamel artwork hanging from the platform canopy. Um, these uh, porcelain enamel artwork go on every station all eight stations. Uh, and in yellow, we have our beautiful art fence that is unique only to Aviation Century Station. Next slide, please. Mr. Yu, could you just real quick go back to slide one just for literally a second. I'm an old man. I just like to just uh, look at uh, again. Um, okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, now moving north to Westchester Veterans Station, uh, we see another form of porcelain enamel artwork. And we have something called between car barrier, which is there to prevent, deter, or warn individuals from inadvertently stepping off the platform in between cars. Uh, I'm not sure if you could see there, but on the bottom half of that uh, photo, you see gray tactile strip that has been installed. Uh, next slide, please. So now we're moving to another station north, uh, to downtown Inglewood Station. Um, we can see how the porcelain enamel artwork looks from a distance and uh, up close. Uh, currently, all, across all eight stations, we are working on finishes and testing. Uh, the presentation mainly focuses on finishes, uh, as testing cannot be seen visually. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. Um, uh, here at the same station, uh, the downtown Inglewood station, uh, we see bike lockers, trash cans, CCTVs, uh, and there in blue, uh, an emergency telephone, also known as ETELS. Uh, these ETELS help connect patrons to the operation at the Rock. Uh, these are the furniture that are also being installed across all stations. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, moving north. Uh, one station, we see porcelain enamel artwork uh, under the canopies at Fairview Heights Station uh, with the architecturally finished canopy column, uh, the stainless steel cladding. Additionally, to the, on the right side, uh, we see the ticket vending machines, uh, the TVMs, uh, and map cases located in our TVM structure, which is a freestanding uh, structure that incorporates the TVMs, the map cases, and Right above the TVM uh, wrapped in plastic, we have something called the variable message sign monitor. Um, and all the TVM structures receive stainless steel cladding as well. Next slide, please. Uh, here, Lamar Park Station is the first of three underground stations that is being presented today. Um, I previously mentioned uh, stainless steel cladding along the stairwell at Aviation Century. Uh, here, you see stainless steel cladding attached to the escalators at the platform level. Um, and in the background, uh, in the far, uh, right behind the stainless steel cladding, you'll see porcelain enamel artwork at the underground stations um, right across the platform. Uh, to the right, we have the elevator framing. Uh, uh, the finish is looking more complete now. And above, we have installed some decals uh, on, on the elevator. Uh, we'll go to the next slide, please. Um, the photo on the left is Crenshaw Boulevard, uh, looking north. Uh, Crenshaw Boulevard is now fully open curb to curb, although the sidewalk still has temporary fencing uh, to protect the, the public from construction activities, ongoing construction activities. Uh, to the right, uh, we have a photo of MLK Station Plaza with the grand pylon, the pavers, benches, and landscaping all installed. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here is our final underground station, uh, our northernmost station, Expo Crenshaw Station. Uh, to the left, we have the same emergency telephone installed. Uh, to the right, we have the barricades installed, wrapped in plastic, uh, to protect uh, 
protect them from construction activities. In the background, we have something called mosaic art, um, mosaic tiles. Um, and these are art pieces that go on uh, all three underground stations at the concourse level. Uh, this one in particular is called the Large Sky, which is roughly 83 feet long by 10 feet tall. Uh, the dimensions vary uh, across three underground stations, but they are uh, within the same footprint. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in regards to upcoming street closures, the contractor anticipates uh, no additional full closures uh, for the Crenshaw project. Next slide. Uh, Annette, are you on the line? Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Board President. My name is Annette Cortez, and I'm the Community Relations Manager on the Crenshaw Analytics Project, and we'll give a brief update on the community relations and public outreach activities on the Crenshaw LAX project as we continue on the construction. The public outreach and information efforts for the project's construction activities along Crenshaw Boulevard were adjusted to comply with COVID-19 restrictions. The outreach efforts have included virtual community construction update meetings, briefings to key stakeholder groups, e-notifications including bilingual construction notices, posts on social media platforms, and phone calls to stakeholders directly impacted by construction activities. We also continue to engage the local business community through small business mitigation programs, including Eat Shop Play, which you heard about earlier in the Regional Connectors um, update. On our project, we have over 80 businesses participating in this program. The businesses who participate have received a um, free bilingual advertisement on local print, on Metro Station digital kiosk on um, bus cards, in addition to e-banners and spotlighted on our e-newsletters and on various social media platforms. The Business Solution Center and Business Interruption Fund are additional small business mitigation programs that we've implemented on this project. And Jessica Spearman, who is also on the call, will provide further update on these programs. Thank you. Next slide. Good morning, uh, President Good and Commissioners. It's lovely to see you all. Uh, once again, my name is Jessica Spearman. I am the Principal Transportation Planner here at Metro overseeing our Pilot Business Solution Center and Business Interruption Fund. Our BSC provides hands-on hands business development, expert advice, and technical coaching for our small businesses along the corridor. Some program stats to date from December 2014 to present, we've contacted over 400 businesses. We have over 300 of them that have participated in intake and assessment. And pardon me, and we have been able to serve over 300 businesses uh, during the duration and the life of the program. Next slide, please. Our pilot business interruption fund provides financial assistance to small mom and pop businesses that are impacted by our transit rail construction. Uh, just some high level stats to date. We've awarded over 700 grants to small mom and pop businesses along the corridor for a total grant value of 19 million or more than 19 million, I should say. And we've been able to support over th uh, 200 businesses along the corridor as well. Thank you. Ms. Spearman, quick question. Sure. Uh, uh, at the risk of being dense. Um, so then presumably, based on those numbers, then some businesses, are, they're, they're accessing multiple grants. Is that what I'm gathering? That's correct. Actually, we have a lot of repeat grantees for our Crenshaw Corridor, and specific, uh, specifically, we have 167 repeat grantees. So businesses are able to receive grants. Uh, it's really dependent on that direct construction impact, and so they may have impact, um, ongoing impact and or um, impact at different times during the project, and they are able to receive grants um, up to $50,000 per impact year. That concludes my update. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Yu, are you done, or do we have more? Uh, that was the last of uh, Mr. Okay. All right, um, colleagues. Any um, questions of Mr. Yu or Ms. Spearman? Or Ms. Or Ms. Cortez? Sorry, Ms. Cortez. <laughs> Sorry, I, I do. Um, this is Vice President Aura. Garcia, um, Ms. Spearman, can you go back to the last slide? I'm kind of confused on the numbers. So, and maybe you can walk me through them, but on your next other sure. slide. Sure. Yeah. So I hear, I see number of referrals are 1,145, 
number of client service 341 um one question on that is what do you mean clients serve are those the same as the grantees or is a different type of service to them it's a different type of service. So our business solution center is a technical resource center that's actually located along the project. It is separate from our business interruption fund. And so businesses can come to our BSC and work with our resource partners that are there to receive any kind of te technical coaching or business development. So maybe building a business plan, perhaps they need access to um, social media to help with their business. Perhaps they want to um, receive more technical assistance in the way of like accounting management. And so it's a more robust program that provides really that kind of technical resources for businesses and that support, that hands-on support. And so um, just to give you an update about the numbers, we've been able to um, serve 341 businesses, meaning that we they've come to us and if they needed something, we were able to support them and provide them with that really kind of um, in-depth case management. And the number of referrals just uh, count, accounts for how many, biz how many different unique referrals. So a business may come in and ask for, oh, I need a referral for a tax preparer or I need a referral for some other kind of specific service. And so we count those separately. But the number of um, businesses along the corridor that we've been able to support is that 341. And uh, from those 341, if you go to the next slide, um, how many of 232 received grants? So actually along the, um, I don't actually know the number. They, they typically overlap. However, most businesses that participate within the Business Interruption Fund do participate within our Business Solution Center. We do not have the same eligibility requirements for our Business Solution Center, so we're able to support a larger number of businesses. Um, while the, the Business Interruption Fund has very specific eligibility requirements to be able to receive this um, grant. Um, but typically there is a, an overlap, um, especially because while businesses benefit greatly from the financial assistance that we provide, they're also um, in need of that really kind of hands-on technical coaching that provides them with the long-term business planning and a sort of forward-looking um, opportunity for their business themselves. Yes, okay. Thank you, Ms. Berman, on that. Um, question, will, you, will your team continue to help these businesses after the construction is done for a period of time, or will you just kind of pack up and leave? Uh, we are, our program will, it will align to construction, and so businesses are, will be around through the term of construction. Um, we, the way that the program is is that businesses have 180 days from the end of the corridor, from the end of the quarter, pardon me, of their last impact to apply to the program. So there will be some time for businesses to um, apply for grants once construction has ceased. Um, but we will really be looking at that construction impact term um, that has occurred, but there will be a time frame for businesses once construction has um, ceased for them to be able to still apply for that impact, that prior impact, I should say. I appreciate that. And I also think that maybe we should think of um, uh, how we can support these businesses a little longer, especially if they're uh, relying on some of your technical assistance that you help them with. I don't want it to be, you know, we're done, so we're done with you too. Um, we've, you know, we've impacted their operations for a very long time, so we want to make sure that we at least give them some support even after the fact. Yes, of course. We are taking our Business Solution Center to Nitro's board this month to extend the term of the contract to account for construction as well, so um, I hope to have a more robust update the next time we go. Thank you, Ms. Bear. I appreciate that. I have one more question, and this is in regards to one of the patients. It's the Crenshaw LAX slide that you showed. Um, it was really nice. I don't know if we can go back to it, but um, I'm mostly one more, I think, right there. So it's a beautiful design. I I appreciate that. I just I see palm trees there, which um, to my uh, colleague Commissioner Davis, I I know he's a big palm. Um, advocate, uh, is there a reason why we chose palm trees? I'm just curious because um, palm trees don't really provide shade, and th it seems like this is a place where people can, you know, congregate or they can sit, wait for the train, wait for their Uber, whatever they're waiting for. And palm trees are look beautiful, and they're really a symbol of LA. I understand that, but is I in their final? I know they're in there now, but can we have thought about maybe? shade-friendly trees, and that could be for 
engaño or whomever. she'll be able to uh, give you some guidance on that. You know, just as we move forward and we think about where folks are going to sit down, we should also think about shade. You know, we're working on this. It's getting hot. And, you know, we also have a climate officer now that can help guide that conversation on how we can be more climate friendly to our community, uh, especially this community as well. So I would appreciate it if you can look into that in the future uh, and really think about Writing more trees with shade, um, and and that won't be that won't require a lot of maintenance. I'm sure Rachel can give some type of good recommendations around that. I will reach out to her and get some feedback and see how we can reflect this in future projects. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That's all for me. So I'm so glad that she raised the issue about the trees. It's a kind of a paradox about the trees because the palm trees' roots, as I've understood it, grow linearly down, go straight down. Some of the other trees that provide shade over time go horizontally. And then, of course, eventually they start deteriorating the surface, whether it is broken up asphalt, if you're going to put that there, or if it's sidewalk and cement, so we experience all of that. I mean, we think about whoever pre- whoever planted the ficus trees 50 years ago is probably not here with us. <laughs> but look what, look what has been left behind. So uh, certainly I'm sure Rachel is the, the appropriate person to make a hopeful designation about the mixing of uh, shade as well. That's what we've been left with on ficus trees. The other issue in terms of the uh, Crenshaw LAX transit project uh, observations, I'm very glad to see what you've presented here today in your report. It is in many ways uh, fulfilling to see the results of the work that you have been doing for these past years and to see the uh, equipment that has been installed to provide the tickets for folks to take the train, uh, to see the infrastructure uh, items that are part of the station. And uh, I cannot thank uh, Metro enough as it relates to the business fund. I know Mayor Garcetti had some uh, interest and leadership and making sure that we considered the business fund. And then today, looking at the $19 million that we've invested over the years, on, on one hand, but on the other hand, just imagine uh, $19 million worth of work and resources that 
that small businesses would have had to have endured without any kind of relief or any kind of support. So it's very fulfilling to see specifically the great work that you have done on the business interruption fund. I think from a public administration point of view, it's the responsible thing to do and not unlike what they do in Hollywood in the movie industry when they go to neighborhoods to film. They leave something behind. Some people said to me who are biologists is that even bumblebees, when they are pollinating plants, leave a little bit of that back into the plant before they fly on off. And so, again, I just want to say in my observations of your work that I'm very pleased to see where we have come from in terms of your progress so far on the Crenshaw Project and look forward to the I believe Commissioner Close had to step away. She's not back yet, is she, Dr. Campos? No, she's not. She's sure. at City Council now. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, Mr. Galley, why don't we go ahead and proceed? Okay. So we'll start with the Purple uh, Lion Project, and we'll start with question one. Jim? Morning. Or good. Yeah, still good morning, uh, Commissioner. Uh, my name is Jim Cohen. I'm the project manager for Section 1 of the Purple Line. The first slide in front of you is just our standard slide indicating the uh, scope of uh, Section 1. Again, starts at Wilshire Western, where the existing Purple Line ends, runs to the uh, Wilshire La Cienega Station, uh, four miles and three stations. As far as the uh, technical details on the bottom, uh, since last time we uh, visited you folks, we're now 70% complete with the project and we're forecasting a revenue service date for now of fall of 2024. What is FFGA, uh, Mr. Cohen? Sorry. Full funding grant agreement. That's the binding uh, agreement we have with the federal government that's a pri uh, providing uh, partial funding of our project. Next slide, please. Our first station, uh, La Brea Station, uh, is well underway. Um, I'll go over the photographs uh, right now. The upper right photograph is showing the uh, masonry installation at the concourse level. Uh, in the back of house is what we call the ancillary areas uh, that support the actual functioning of the station. And in that area, we have a lot of different rooms. And uh, right now we're uh, placing the concrete block to establish those various rooms. Um, the lower right photograph we uh, have a, a, most of the roof has already been cast on the La Brea station and we're starting to put in the permanent utilities. We're transitioning from temporary utilities that have been hung from the deck to uh, utilities that are actually going to remain in place when we're finished. The lower photograph is a 33 inch sanitary sewer um, that uh, we just, uh, we just installed. Um, the uh, lower left photograph is an appendage. Uh, these are the uh, ancillary areas outside of the true station box that provide either uh, ventilation air uh, exhaust or fresh air coming in or some of our emergency exits uh, for the station. And this is uh, appendage number three, which is on the north side of uh, mm -hmm. Wilshire, Wilshire Boulevard in front of the uh, what we call the BMW building. 
and this is just showing we're excavating down and eventually we'll start our way up with the concreting for those uh, ancillary uh, appendages. Um, I think that covers uh, this slide. Next slide, please. At Fairfax Station, uh, we are again uh, very uh, involved in the construction. The first uh, upper right photograph shows the roof placement. Um, our uh, purple line, uh, section one, two, and three are, are relatively unique as far as our um, existing uh, subway station where we have an arch. We don't have uh, center uh, uh, columns or any support in the columns. So this is a view of the rebar uh, for uh, our, an arch section of the roof uh, that's getting placed. Uh, and those uh, reddish things are the struts uh, that are holding back the, uh, the, the uh, structure right now until that roof is cast. Um, the lower photograph is showing some uh, HDPE, which is a thick plastic membrane. And uh, as stated previously in front of the board, uh, we have our stations are totally encapsulated in this HDPE to keep uh, any water or gas from entering the, entering the station. Uh, this happens to be uh, uh, one of the appendages, similar to like I just discussed at uh, La Brea. This appendage is fully excavated, and they're starting to put the uh, uh, HDPE in before they start the concreting operations. Um, the lower left photograph is a photograph of the entrance structure uh, of uh, Fairfax itself. Uh, you're kind of looking south. That's one of the exterior walls, and uh, eventually... We'll have the same sort of equipment that Matt showed you, uh, where you have the TBMs and the elevators. But obviously, um, uh, they're a lot uh, uh, further on than we are. Um, as far as uh, appendages, we're working, as stated here, we have three different appendages working simultaneously, as well as um, a work on the station, station roof and the exterior walls. Next slide, please. Uh, street closures, okay. Um, the first uh, uh, closure on the north side of Wilshire at S Sycamore has been implemented. Uh, that's the first bar. Um, the second uh, bar there, which is going to be the uh, south Sycamore, south curb uh, south of Sycamore, uh, which we plan on implementing a closure in uh, mid-October. Uh, uh, and uh, we plan, uh, we've heard you guys loud and clear, we plan on being in front of the board uh, late August uh, to get uh, approval of that uh, street closure. So uh, late August we will be back, uh, similar to what uh, Matt just did as far as his street closure request. So we'll be back in late August uh, for uh, an October, mid-October uh, closure. Uh, as indicated here, the north uh, uh, phase, the north sycamore will be fully open uh, before we uh, close the south. So it will be a transition where we'll open uh, north sycamore before we close uh, south sycamore in the middle of October. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, this is just our slide of the uh, business uh, interruption fund, uh, the amount of uh, grants awarded, the value, and the business count. I believe that's the end of my presentation. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Uh, any questions, uh, Commissioner Villegas? I'm good. Thank you so much for your presentation. I have no questions. Thank you. Um, President Pro Tem Davis? Again, with the business interruption fund, um, I see there's 80 business count 87, and then grants awarded to 48. Can you, uh, Ms. Berman, break down what these numbers are saying? Sure. So, um, again, Jessica Spearman, uh, Principal Transportation Planner over the Business Interruption Fund. Um, so we've supported uh, 87 businesses. 
and that means of those 248 grants, businesses are allowed to receive more than one grant. So it's dependent upon that direct construction impact. And so um, if it's 87 businesses, it looks like we have on this corridor 60 repeat grantees. So 60 of the 87 have received more than one grant. And that's how the program is designed so that it's not just a one-time thing, um, dependent on them um, meeting all of the eligibility requirements, pardon me, they were able to receive more than one grant for that direct construction impact. It allows us to have a, a broader reach, if you will, and support businesses. It does, thank you. So the business count 87, those are folks that you're doing your technical assistance to? No, for this program, so we only have our technical assistance program just on the Crenshaw Corridor. So for oh, this I program, our business interruption fund, it's on the Crenshaw Corridor, the Little Tokyo area of the regional connector, and then Purple Line Extension Section 1, Section 2, and soon to be Section 3. So these are actually 87 businesses along the Section 1 of the business of the Purple Line Extension Corridor um, that have received grants from us. Um, and of those, 60 are repeat grantees. And so these are those small mom and pop businesses that we've worked with, whether it be those hairstylists or whether it be those restaurateurs or even professional services and um, technical offices like um, attorneys and dentists and things like that. And so this is specific to um, section one of the Purple Line Extension. I uh, got it. Okay, thank you so much. That's all for me on this one. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Um, uh, President Pro Tem Davis. I don't think I see him on the screen, maybe. He accidentally logged off. Um, okay, we'll see. Um, Commissioner Colosa, let's see you back. Uh, thank you, President Good. Um, I don't have any questions, but um, it'd be just a request, assuming it's not too difficult to do, but it would be helpful to see what the change was from the last time you reported and like how many awards were new from when um, you last came here. So not nothing new for, for this one, but maybe for the next time you come, if you can just show like, you know, plus 10 or plus 15, that um, that change uh, is helpful for us to understand uh, the awards for, for this program, which is, you know, one of its kind and one that I know a lot of us really care about since it does help small businesses. Thank you. Great suggestion. We will certainly do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Um, thank you, Commissioner Kelsa. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cohen. Uh, thank I think you. We can go forward to phase two. Good afternoon, President Good uh, and Commissioners. Mike McKenna, Executive Officer and Project Manager for Section Two of the Purple Line Extension. Hello, Mr. So, so Section Two is the next two and a half miles uh, through the city of Beverly Hills and back into the city of Los Angeles and Century City. Uh, we are um, nearly complete on the design phase of this design build project and about just under 50% complete on construction. And we're still forecasting a summer of 25 opening. Next slide, please. And just a reminder of where we are located within the city of Los Angeles and Century City. Uh, even though the tunnels are being constructed currently in the city of Beverly Hills, the majority of the construction impacts are within the city of Los Angeles here in Century City. Next slide, please. So just a quick update on where we are with tunnel construction. Uh, both tunnels are a little bit more than 15% complete, and uh, I'm happy to report that we are uh, completely north of all property owned by the Beverly Hills Unified School District. Both machines are heading up Lasky Drive right now prior to their turn back to Wilshire. On the photos there, you can see the bottom left, an aerial view of the tunnel access shaft and the construction staging yard where all tunnel construction activity is now being based. We're no longer supporting the tunneling operation from within Constellation Boulevard. Uh, everything is now off the street in the yard. And the photo on the bottom right there is a photo of the BL tunnel. That's if you were standing at Union Station looking west towards the west side, the, B, the BL tunnel is the tunnel on your left. So that is a photo underneath Beverly Hills High School, the completed section of tunnel. Next slide, please. So um, the Century City Constellation Station, currently we are in full excavation mode at the station. We have excavation occurring on both sides of Avenue of the Stars, and I'm happy to report that we uh, ended our full closure of Constellation Boulevard uh, eight or nine days early or eight or nine days prior to the date that we were required to close. I know we had discussed in previous meetings that we had some contingency 
in the schedule as discussed earlier by one of the commissioners. And I'm happy to say that we didn't need to use all of that contingency and we were able to open ahead of time. Uh, so this is a photo looking at Constellation Boulevard sort of to the southwest. And you can see it's wide, well, it's not wide open, but it is open. You can drive in either direction from Century Park West to Century Park East. Uh, and in the photo there, you can see in the middle of the photo, there's a crane set up on the north side of the street. That's facilitating excavation of the uh, eastern part of the station or east of Avenue of the Stars. And then there's a, another similar setup west of the intersection with Avenue of the Stars, which you can see near the top of the photo, where we are excavating in front of the Century Plaza Hotel. And we're, on the, in the, we're getting close to modifying our uh, traffic control plans over in front of the hotel to accommodate um, full in and out, um, in and out access to the hotel during our excavation work. We've worked very closely with the hotel and CD5 and our colleagues at the Bureau of Engineering and the Department of Transportation to come up with a solution that satisfied their concerns. So that's very close to being implemented prior to the hotel opening. Um, so we're, we're very pleased with the way that the construction is progressing in Century City right now. The bottom right, you can kind of see the phase of the excavation we're in where we're excavating around the utilities. So things are, are going a little bit slow by plan because this is very difficult digging around the utilities, but we're getting close to um, the, the lowest utility in the area, which is the city of, L city of LA sewer that's at a depth of about 25 feet below the decking. And once we get below that sewer, then it's just, it's just uh, native soil that needs to be removed and the excavation rate will pick up. So we're anticipating um, that excavation will run through the early part of first quarter of calendar year 2022. So hopefully we'll be done with the excavation in the January, February timeframe. Next slide, please. And here's our, um, our summary of street closures. We are, we're not forecasting any full street closures in the near future. Um, we, the, the, the traffic arrangement that we have in place right now is sort of the, the steady state that will be in place throughout excavation and concrete work for the station. So it's uh, about a two year duration. So probably sometime in 2022, we'll be giving you a look, at, look ahead at when we plan on doing the full street closure work that was described for the regional connector earlier in the meeting at the tail end of our project. But for the short term, let's say the next calendar year, we're not looking at coming to you with any requests for full street closures. We are very cognizant of the upcoming Los Angeles Marathon. I think as most of the, the, most of the people watching this meeting and the board knows, that the finish line for the LA Marathon this year is in Century City, just, just north of our station box. So any street closure or, or lane closures for some upcoming storm drain work that will need to be done at Avenue of the Stars will have to be closely coordinated so that the marathon has priority that weekend. Next slide, please. And this is our last slide. Um, if you have any questions about the, um, the grants to date, I do have the information that was just requested for section one handy. It's just, I'm just lucky that I had it in my email to respond to this in real time. But as of our last update, we've added six new grants and one new business to the list. And if, if you have any other additional questions, uh, Jessica Spearman, I believe is still with us and she could probably answer those for you. Thank you, Mr. McKenna, as always. Um, uh, colleagues, any questions? Uh, Vice President Garcia? I don't have any questions on this one. Thank you very much for your report, Mr. McKenna. Thank well, you, Vice President Garcia. Uh, President Pro Tem Davis? Mr. Oh, President oh, Fernandez. Oh, that's right. Okay, sorry. Um, productivity Commission right now. Oh, that's right. I, that is right. Which, um, uh, Commissioner Viegas. No questions from me. Appreciate the report, Mr. Kenna. Thank you. You're welcome. And Commissioner Colosso. Um, no questions for me. I appreciate the, the live uh, real-time update from Ms. McKenna and Ms. Spearman. Brownie points to you both for that immediate change. Um, it's good to know that the difference in the, the additional uh, grants award for the BIF and um, 
great pictures. I know it's complicated work. And so I look forward to seeing you all hopefully get through this complicated excavation that you're in and hopefully it'll be um, you know, smooth sailing. I guess my one uh, uh, random question for you is anytime we do these large excavations, I know sometimes we find interesting artifacts um, in the ground. Uh, just curious if Metro has encountered anything. Um, we haven't we haven't encountered anything from an archaeo or archaeologic or paleontolo paleontological um, perspective yet. We found some utilities that we weren't expecting, uh, which happens on on every project, but nothing nothing major. But we do have full time archaeopaleo monitors that are monitoring the excavation, and if we do find something interesting, I'll make sure that we we uh, flag it in our next quarterly presentation so that you're aware of it. It was just interesting. I know that anytime we dig, that sometimes you, I think one time you all found some, some dinosaur bones, if I recall, or if that was the LEPD building, I can't remember. But um, thank you for your update, Mr. McKenna. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. McKenna. Now, Mr. Gailey, let's uh, go forward again. Yeah, section three in the last project, uh, Kimberly. Good afternoon, President Goodson, Commissioners. Uh, this is the, the third of the extension for the Purple Line. Uh, this extends the Purple Line an, an additional two and a half miles with stations at UCLA and the VA. Uh, the budget is 3.6 billion and uh, currently still on target for the uh, forecast for revenue service in 2027 and um, the FFGA in 2028. Next slide, please. Um, this next one is for our tunnel contract. Um, we, we have two separate design build contracts, a little bit different from my colleagues from sections uh, one and two. Um, for our tunneling contract, um, TBM1, um, whose name is Iris, um, has, has tunneled um, over 500 feet, and TBM2, um, name is Ara, has uh, tunneled approximately 170 feet. Um, the contractor has been working on other associated uh, tunneling activities. Um, one of the items that our contractor is doing um, underneath the Fulton Boulevard near the Wilshire and 405 um, intersection is, um, is uh, doing what we call horizontal directional drilling. So they're, um, they'll, they'll be doing, they're doing permeation grouting underneath the MWD 96-inch uh, water line, um, which are, we will be tunneling underneath. Um, on the next slide, please. Um, this is an update with my stations contractor. Um, still early on compared to the other projects you've seen today. Um, the final design is still ongoing. Um, at the VA station, the contractor is, is currently, um, uh, they, they have finished utility relocation, so that's an ongoing um, activity. Um, they've started with the supportive excavation pile installation. They're about 50% complete now. And over in the Westwood UCLA area, the contractor has um, been continuing with the utility relocations. And, um, and then in the, in the pictures on the, the left-hand side, um, on the, the left upper one, that's over at the West VA station. And the lower left-hand picture, that's a picture of, some, of the sanitary sewer relocation by the contractor. And then we do have some other third-party utility work um, connection to one of the businesses um, later this coming winter. Um, on the next slide, um, I added this slide. Um, we currently do not have street closure requests from our contractor. Our contractor is working um, nights, weekends, and when they do the upcoming piling work, um, we have a, a approved peak hour exemptions. So I, I brought this one out there to show you. Um, I know it's very hard to, to read, but there's a, a vertical uh, dash line. That's where we are today. Currently, we're under utility relocations, and um, in the, the Westwood area, the contractor is planning to start piling work um, on Wilshire Boulevard in August. So that's one that will be, um, I'm going to say, more more uh, more visible to the public from from the other work. And we've been doing utility work out in, in the Westwood area since 2018, so this will be a new activity. Um, on the, the last slide that we have today, on the next slide, um, this is business, business interruption fund. Um, to date, we have, been not, we have not awarded any grants to date, um, and I believe Jessica is on the, on the line still if you have any questions. Um, so that concludes the presentation for Purple Line 3. Are there any questions? Uh, com Commissioner Villegas? Thank you for your report. I do not have any questions. Thank you. Um, uh, Vice President Garcia, who is apparently the namesake of uh, the second TBM. Yeah, I first question. <laughs>
question is that? <laughs> is it, it? I don't think it's spelled my name, like my name, right? It's spelled Ara A R A. I didn't. I didn't see it I, on. I, 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 I will put it on the next one, but it is spelled uh, as as your name is, is spelled A U R A. Interesting. Okay. Well, you let me know why that was chosen. But but I would appreciate a plaque. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to know I'll be in a metro station, um, or in a tunnel, I should say. <laughs> um, I do have a, a real question, though. My, my question was, um, you said there hasn't been any grants awarded. However, I see $31 million here. Can you break down those numbers again? Sure. So we just haven't awarded grants on this specific section yet. Um, we will be moving forward with this section later this year, and so we should start to see some grantees from this particular section, Section 3. The totals that you see here are for the um, entire program for all of the corridors that you're seeing. And so that is where the $31 million is, is for all of the corridors for the Business Interruption Fund. So that's the Crenshaw Project, the regional, the Little Tokyo area of the Regional Connector, the Second and Broadway segment of the Regional Connector, and Sections 1 and 2 of the Purple Line Extension. And this is from um, program inception to date, so from March 20. 15 to date we've awarded over 31 million to small mom and pop businesses along all of those corridors and soon to be section three got it and um when you said not yet is it that area you guys just haven't gone in there or first of all what area is it the one that you have not provided any grants yet so it's for this section three that Kimberly just went over. It's for this particular area. Um, we will be going in there soon. We have been monitoring construction and also working with our um, contractor for our, uh, I should say, fund administrator or contractor for this section, um, as well as monitoring things related to COVID. We did hit a little bit of a, um, uh, some delays due to the pandemic um, as far as implementing work along this section, but we will be beginning later this year. Okay, have any businesses been impacted thus far? They would still be eligible. We just haven't begun to um, to go out and to specifically work with them and to accept grants yet, but they would still be eligible for impact, um, provided that they meet all of the eligibility requirements. The program does work on a delay, if you will. Um, we need to be able to look at that direct construction impact, and then we have to be able to look at a business's financial um, documentation. And so because of that, we do work on a delay to be able to collect those documentation, that documentation and see that kind of revenue loss that a, bi a business may impact, or a business must have, rather, I should say. So um, they would still be eligible. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm, uh, I'm clear on it. I guess what I'm saying, const has construction started in that specific area? Have we blocked any businesses now? that uh, are we blocking any doors, parking spaces, or anything that would impact the operation of a business in that area? If I may answer that one. Um, so as far as our construction, um, in terms of the, the, I'll say, piling work and the bigger works, that currently is on the Veterans Administration campus. So it's contained in a, in a green area, and, and there aren't those businesses in, in that area. Um, for the businesses, um, and, and it primarily our, our work that you see from the surface is really at the station, similar to Section 2. So uh, the businesses are really in the Westwood UCLA area. And the, the utility relocation work that, that we've been uh, conducting under the project for the last several years, that, that work um, hasn't, um, I'll say, bl blocked off and, and closed off the street like you have seen on the other projects. Right. Um, primarily, our, our work is, is, is nights and weekends. Um, we keep lanes open, keep the traffic going through, and keeping access to the businesses. So I, I'm going to say it, it's, it's a, a little bit early compared to the other projects. Um, with, with some of these other um, activities that, that we'll be moving into on the project, um, that, that's why we have the, the business interruption fund. So I'm going to say at this point, it, it's been utility relocations and not, not to the same magnitude of what you've seen with the other projects to date. Okay, that makes it clear now. I will, uh, perfectly clear. I understand where we're at now, exactly then. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Ong and Ms. Spearman, again, for the breakdown on those numbers. Thank you. Thank you, TBM Garcia. Um, uh, let's uh, uh, check in with uh, Vice Rivera with uh, Commissioner uh, Villegas. Hi, 
I'm listening. I was just putting some pretzels in my mouth. <laughs> but you already called on me. I did. I'm sorry. Goodness. Okay, no worries. <laughs> sorry. Commissioner Clozo. Uh, thanks, President Good. I don't have any questions. I appreciate uh, Vice President Garcia's questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, with that, um, uh, does that, is that, uh, do we have any more? We, we don't have any more, Mr. Gailey, correct? No, that concludes our okay. presentation. Um, all right. Um, well, thank you all very much. That was um, incredibly helpful. I know that was uh, long for everyone here, but uh, I have to say that office, Marcia Segura is with us, as is um, uh, Jenny Delwood, uh, I believe COO or, 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 yeah, of, of Liberty Hill Foundation, correct, Jenny? Executive Vice President. I'm sorry, uh, Executive Vice President. Um, Jenny, hi, it's good to see you, Jenny. Um, uh, Director Segura, please uh, jump on in. Great, thank you. Um, so as uh, President Good mentioned, uh, and as all of you already know, ours is a basically startup office, and um, we found that for our stakeholder engagement and design process, um, we wanted to model what LA County did for their uh, sustainability plan, and Liberty Hill was the lead uh, organization that developed that methodology and approach. And so we want to build upon uh, their experience, their, their approach, uh, especially since um, many of the constituents and organizations that we work with have already already a really good relationship with the Liberty Hill Foundation, so that means outreach will be will flow easier, design will flow easier, um, and I'm I'm barely getting to the point where I'm going to build my staff in the next fiscal year, so this is going to be a tremendous support to the City of Los Angeles to ensure that we meet our timeline as uh, the Climate Emergency Mobilization Office to both not just launch our commission, but ensure that the uh, climate equitable climate action plan coincides with the stakeholder engagement design that both the city and our office uh, with Liberty Hill will conduct. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Marta. Um, all right, colleagues. Um, Vice President Garcia, why don't you kick us off? 
Um, thank you, President Good. I don't have any specific questions at this time. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Coloso. Uh, thank you, President Good. Nice to see you, Ms. Agura. Um, and, you know, we're all excited for your new role and, and uh, you know, what's to come from this office. Um, I have a few questions. I'm glad that this item is, you know, moving forward. And um, just so I understand correctly, so we're tapping into the LA County on call list. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, Liberty Hill has done some work with them before, both for that on call list and, and other work as well. Okay. Yeah, we don't typically, I know, tap into that, but that said, I know that government contracts and that piggybacking is available for any government agency, but it's nice to see us actually doing that collaboration. I wish we saw more of it so we don't uh, reinvent the wheel because it does take a ton of work to have these on call lists. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for for doing that and looking at existing models to make sure that you're um, uh, you know applying those best practices. Um, some of the one of the questions that I had too is I know you have an extensive. Um, scope here in terms of what the tasks are going to be for Liberty Hill. Uh, one of the things, though, that I didn't read about was around language access and knowing that this is around stakeholder engagement and public outreach and knowing how many people we need to reach out to are going to be multilingual. Can you speak a little bit as to why that was not included or what the plans are for that since I didn't read about it specifically in the scope? Uh, yeah, thank you, um, Commissioner Colosa, for asking that question. Well, that's exactly one of the things that I feel the Liberty Hill Foundation and also the city, right, um, are a leader in. And I guess we if we felt it was an Im implicit with their model, but we will bring more clarification to that um, in, you know, and, and as we be begin the stakeholder engagement design team in collaboration with the other nonprofit organizations and the universities, that will definitely be highlighted and we uh, describe the process then. I don't know if um, uh, Jenny Delwood would like to add anything to that. Sure, happy to. It's certainly going to be part of the process if this moves forward and is approved by you all. Uh, currently, we do have a similar outreach and education contract with uh, HSIN, uh with the city, and we are engaged in multiple languages in our workshops, in our outreach program, certainly Spanish and English, but also Korean, Khmer. Mandarin. Uh, we also have uh, outreach happening um, in uh, a few other Asian languages um, and we'll definitely take into account the unique needs of this particular project, work with our community partners and community-based organizations as well as the cadre of uh, interpreters that we've actually trained up through these outreach and engagement activities. So one of the really neat things about the model uh, that, that we bring to the table and we've honed over time through our contracts with the county and with the city is we've been able to train up community members uh, to be interpreters, to get paid to do the work, um, as well as to be uh, you know peers and neighbors uh, with the individuals that are participating in the program to, uh, to be that uh, conduit for language access in particular. So excited to bring that to this project as well. Um, Thank you for that additional information, Ms. Delwood. I think it's really important to, you know, be explicit for the language access work, just because we don't see it um, often enough, and we know uh, we're constantly building out um, that portfolio of work that we're doing at the city. So I'd love to see uh, more of those plans. Maybe I can follow up with you um, after this, Ms. Agora, to share some of the work that we've um, been researching in the last two years through our language access working group, so that it's helpful to inform. Um, the work that you've done. I know LA Sanitation um, has been great too on some of the public outreach uh, contracts that they've had to, to implement some of our, our suggestions. And so I'd love to work with you on, on that piece. Um, and uh, the only uh, other question that I had was, can you, um, and by the way, I, I have to say, I really appreciated the very extensive um, status of funding uh, uh, detail that you wrote in your report. I really appreciated that. And so uh, if I'm reading it correctly, this, uh, you know, 185 is just specifically for this year. And then uh, you anticipate around a $3 million um, ceiling overall for the next three years that you
you'll get in additional funding at some point from from council uh, uh, either from council or from fundraising activities but i do want to clarify that we modified the city to two million um so i i apologize for that delay in information and i think that that will be uh, something that we modify at the end of uh, yeah i'm gonna uh, in, uh, make that uh, amendment, an amendment yeah. to the yes to the report the contract is up to two million the report says three we're gonna i'm gonna uh, introduce an amendment to make it up to uh, not to exceed two Got okay. And right now you have 185. That's, that's correct. Cool. Okay. We and have exactly one. Uh, well, we have 200, but we're transferring 185 if this is approved by the board for this fiscal year. Got it. And um, my last question is: I noticed that there wasn't any sort of terms around uh, renewal or extension, which I know sometimes we see in contracts just in case. Um, is there a reason why we didn't write that in for for this one? I think the city attorney recommended that because we have like the uh, it's a notice to proceed right and, and we have several provisions to to um, continue with the contract over three years that if if necessary and and this if necessary we can later uh, reintroduce and amend and or also because this is um, this is a model that we hope that the city adopts and we can we can internally develop that CMO. So we're also assessing and reassessing the capacity building of the office uh, and ensuring that you know we, we have the right set of um, scope to match the office right? and, and the needs that we have for that project. Right, and hopefully in, in three years you will have uh, enough of a team to perform this work. That's right. right. So, uh, That's fingers right. Crossed. Um, uh, thank you, Ms. Agura, for answering my questions. Thank you, Ms. Delwood, as well. I, I don't have anything else, but just excited to see this move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Um, Commissioner Villegas. Thank you, um, and uh, thank you, uh, Martha Segura, for joining us today and for your um, board letter before us. Um, and thank you, Ms. Uh, Jenny Delwood for uh, joining us as well from the Liberty Hill Foundation. Um, I'm glad that uh, I was able to identify just steps that LA County took on their sustainability process, which was lengthy, and uh, appreciate that uh, we're not reinventing the wheel here, and uh, that you're partnering with the Liberty Hill Foundation to do uh, excellent work for us just to tabulate uh, know some of the efforts that have already taken place and some of the new ones that will take place too for, for sustainability and for climate change um, as the work progresses I'm just curious uh, how will we get updates uh, just as uh, as this uh, is coming about that's one of my questions and then the next question and you can just um, uh, answer them all together the next question is um, are there going to be, as you as you work with other groups, I heard you say, uh, Ms. Delwood, that you actually provide stipends to some local community groups to do translations. So I know that the model that LA County does is for like um, outreach and for um, stakeholder engagement. Uh, they provide uh, some stipends for local nonprofits. And so I was wondering if you were planning on doing something like that as well. Yes, absolutely. So we plan to, to provide more than stipends, uh, probably, you know, larger grants, depending on our budget size, right? Um, but a lot of the money that we do um, uh, receive through this contract uh, will actually go to community-based organizations, not just to do the translation or interpretation, uh, which is a slightly different model, but actually to be partners with us in thinking through uh, the, the assemblies, the outreach, uh, the community engagement, so for us at Liberty Hill, one of the um, value adds that we bring to the table is of being a regional hub. So we may coordinate the effort, but we're bringing in a variety of different organizations, in this case, uh, environmental justice organizations, most likely to partner with us citywide, uh, groups that have expertise in particular neighborhoods uh, that will be able to be uh, involved in the planning process. So our model is that we do actually uh, bring in additional groups that we actually are lean and mean at Liberty Hill where we're, you know, we're uh, taking a small chunk of the resources for coordination purposes, but
but getting the vast majority of those dollars out to community-based organizations uh, to bring in community residents uh, much more uh, close to the ground, um, to be able to think through um, engaging popular education mechanisms for the outreach and engagement. So uh, that is definitely part of our plan. And then as it relates to the stipends, uh, those are community members, not necessarily organizations, but individuals who have actually been trained up officially and received interpretation cert certifications that we are able to also offer uh, job opportunities to um, because of these types of community engagements. So absolutely right on that will be what we're doing is engaging a, a series of community organizations, which will work with uh, the Climate Mobilization Office to select and get approved. Um, and then they'll be co-planning these assemblies and engagement processes. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that. And just one last thing. I know the, the board letter says that uh, you're exempt from the BIP, right? The business improvement uh, program, but it seems like you're still gonna be hitting those um, those uh, thresholds, so I would, you know, just document them to the extent that it's feasible or possible, not meant to any more work, um, but it, it's noted on here that it's an exemption, but I think that you're still going to be able to hit those goals um, regardless so that you can still, you know, highlight that in your in your efforts as, to That's go great. above and beyond. Great. And Commissioner Villegas, just to answer your question about how, we'll, how we will be reporting, we did put some evaluation um, targets in there. So we will be working with either a university or, or Liberty Hill and the organizations combined to figure out how we're going to measure our outcomes and report back to the city. But I do have a, a language in there that Liberty Hill will be reporting to us on a monthly basis and will be engaged you know, throughout the month as well. But we will have these reporting targets that we will establish through the stakeholder engagement design process itself. Wonderful, thank you so much. I have no further questions. Thanks, Commissioner Villegas. Um, so on that note, um, Dr. Campos, you know what I'd, I, I'd like to suggest is, given the, the sort of dynamism of the work that's gonna take place over the next couple of years and the scope, um, and frankly, the, the, the public eye, because this is just gonna be such a um, important uh, first uh, effort um, on the part of the city of Los Angeles and frankly anywhere um, in terms of really institutionalizing um, the voices, um, the input, um, and the, uh, uh, the, the, just the, the participation of frontline vulnerable communities um, uh, for the city. Uh, what I think would be really good is if Marta, you, if we plan on Marta doing um, quarterly oral reports, you don't need to be drafting, uh, you're gonna have plenty of work to do, so we don't need to have, need to have written reports, but quarterly oral reports just to come uh, to board, and you've, you know, you've seen um, where the, the different um, bureaus and offices do this, um, Climate or, or uh, uh, Office of Petroleum and Natural Gas and Safety Administration does this, um, Chief Forrester does this. Let's, let's go ahead and calendar that, Dr. Campos, if you can work with Marta. Um, moving forward, I think that'd be great. But let's definitely make it oral, unless you want to bring stuff, right? I mean, you're certainly welcome to do that. Um, but I don't want to create um, a, a heavy burden. But you know, coming in quarterly and checking in and letting us know how things are going, I think would be really great. And obviously, depending on and contingent on where things are at, um, um, inviting Liberty Hill to uh, be here for that as well would certainly um, uh, be invited. Um, so uh, uh, then. Secondly, I do just want to add, and not inconsistent with that, um, that this is extremely exciting work um, for the City of Los Angeles, for the Department of Public Works. Um, it is uh, vital, uh, 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 potentially life-saving work um, for the City of Los Angeles. And um, it is also unprecedented um, in mega cities or otherwise um, in this country um, um, to have this type of dedicated um, uh, approach and so um, we're thrilled to I'm personally uh, very excited to have Liberty Hill be um, a partner here um, and um, very much looking forward to this work progressing um, as expeditiously efficiently um, and aggressively um, as possible so um, uh, this is exciting and this is very good one also I would note um, just for the for everyone's edification um, in terms of also the funding 
uh, remember in, in, in the just approved um, uh, fiscal year 21-22 budget, um, there's also um, uh, there's a, a $500,000 um, line item for um, consulting services. So um, we, we are in, in, in better shape than just the, 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 the left, the, the 185. So, um, and uh, I think there's, there's a real commitment on the part of the city council and on the part of the mayor um, towards the success um, and, and institutionalization of this work. And so um, I'm very confident that we'll get there. Um, so I will motion uh, to approve the item with an amendment um, to uh, uh, change uh, the, uh, the, the not to exceed amount in the board report, Dr. Campos, to two million rather than three million. Um, and I'll motion to move it as amended. Uh, do I have a second? Mr. President, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. As executive officer, would your board like to also consider amending recommendation number three to also clarify the not to exceed amount of $2 million on recommendation number three, and then also the fiscal impact section of the report should also be amended to reflect instead of the 185 up to $2 million? I, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, um, let's, let's do that. We'll add it to the third recommendation. So um, I will um, offer the amendment to, um, to, to amend uh, recommendation three and add a not to exceed $2 million uh, uh, amount to that, and um, also to amend um, and revise the fiscal status or financial status section to reflect um, a not to exceed $2 million cap. Do I have a second? Sure, good. I'm sorry, this, oh. is, uh, this is Ted. Yeah, I'm looking at the recommendations now, uh, and I apologize. Uh, may have a, an additional change to you. Oh, no, nope, I see it. Never mind. It's my bad. I, I was not reading it carefully enough. So, no problem. Again, I spoke. Which is rare for our council, but uh, I want to just. Uh, but but no problem. Um, by the way, um, Mr. Jordan, any um, uh, any comments on the uh, on the sole source? You're comfortable uh, for the record. Yes, we're comfortable. We, we took a close look at this, uh, what our needs are, what our code requires, and what LA County did. So we're, we're comfortable with proceeding. Great, thank you. And I would echo uh, Jessica's comment. It is um, unfortunately, well, I won't even, I won't do the, 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 the what hasn't been. It's great to see this level of collaboration and the, and the leveraging of, 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 of work. Um, uh, LA, LA, LA County did. Um, all right, so who seconded? Everybody? Okay, Vice President Garcia, um, any uh, follow-up questions or concerns, Viegas or Colosa? All right, and then um, Martha and Jenny, I would, I would ask you, I'll make sure and check in with Jessica. She is certainly a, um, uh, 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 a maven as it relates to um, uh, language access, and she's doing amazing work um, on the part of Portland and the city with that, so um, uh, she's a resource. In. So, um, sorry, Jessica, I just volunteered you further than you may have already. Although I know you would. <laughs> All right, hearing no objections, uh, the item as amended is adopted forthwith. Um, congratulations, Martha and Jenny. Thanks for being with us and thanks for being patient. Appreciate it. Go forth. Let's go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, y'all. Bye-bye. Okay, folks, um, uh, most patient purpose or person, um, uh, in the room uh, now is actually probably Bob Potter. Um, so uh, I'm going to move to item eight. Uh, item eight is an authority for expenditure. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I talked to Bob. Bob, you're here for a second. <laughs> sorry, Bob. Um, uh, authority for expenditure, MCG and Associates, Bureau of Street Services and Office of Accounting are requesting board approval and execution of an authority for expenditure. In the amount of $33,000, new adjusted amount of $66,000, to encumber funds for fiscal year 2021 or 2020 2021 to pay for the promotional and educational material and literature, as well as hosting and participation in various events throughout the city to raise awareness and understanding among contractors, businesses, and stakeholders of the city's sidewalk and park bending program. Authorize the president or two members of the Board of Public Works to execute the contract after approval this form has been obtained from the city attorney ae 210 m fund 100 general fund department number 86 
Appropriation Unit 003040. Um, Richard, are you, uh, Rose, are you here on this? Mr. Schreiner. Uh, I'm here. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Schreiner, hi. Yeah, I present. You've been the most patient person <laughs> in the joint. So. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, again, good afternoon, President Good. Uh, Vice President Garcia, Commissioners, uh, Mr. City Attorney, your representatives, and uh, Dr. Campos. Uh, my name is Richard Shervani. I'm a Management Analyst with uh, Streets LA Investigation Enforcement Division. Uh, we're here in front of you today to expand on the existing task order solicitations to finish off the current fiscal year. Uh, as you know, there was a lot of uncertainty this year, uh, but now that we have more of a financial understanding of what to expect um, and what the budget looks like, uh, uh, we understand uh, what's necessary. Uh, with the economy reopening and vendors getting out in the city, there's an anticipated need for outreach, and we'd like to get a jump on it, especially considering the, the permit fee is scheduled to go up uh, from $291 to uh, $541 uh, starting July 1st. And we'd like to provide as much outreach as we can so that vendors can take advantage of that lower fee. Um, as you're aware, we have been working with contractors approved by council uh, since the start of the sidewalk and park vending program. Um, this fiscal year, Streets LA received $350,000 in funding to provide community outreach for uh, the program. And as you're aware, uh, this board approved that task order solicitation for on-call community outreach and uh, education pertaining to the advancement of the city sidewalk and park vending program. Uh, with the assistance of our outreach partners, uh, we produced uh, brochures, flyers, short articles, videos, and presentations outlining how those interested in becoming uh, uh, a part of a sidewalk and park vending uh, program uh, and how they can obtain a vending permit as well as assistance in applying for that permit. We've uh, been pleased with uh, the work of uh, the contractor before you, MCG and Associates. Um, they have uh, worked on various promotional and educational uh, material as well as presentations, such as uh, seminars, uh, webinars, and walkthroughs, and uh, they're displayed on Streets LA's website. Um, we'd like to therefore expand on their work uh, by way of additional meetings, uh, whether it's online or in person, if our current state of affairs allows for that, um, uh, and essentially to provide as much outreach as there is an expected demand uh, as the economy begins to open back up. Uh, more people are outdoors and sidewalk be uh, vendors are beginning to um, go back to normal operations. Um, providing them with uh, this additional information will prepare them for compliance with the city's rules and regulations, including appropriate vending zones and proper food hygiene practices uh, that conform to Los Angeles County's COVID guidelines. Uh, with that said, uh, we'd like to request uh, that the award amount of toss number two and toss number three be increased from $20,000 to $33,000 for MCG and Associates, uh, totaling $66,000 uh, to accommodate the outreach on a larger scale. Um, and given their reach, they do have uh, the necessary relationships to make this program the success that we want it to be. And although we're doing a lot uh, every day, we, we definitely do need this support. And um, having heard so much interest from uh, our stakeholders to provide additional outreach and education to sidewalk vendors, we uh, have provided recommendations to do just that. Um, with that said, um, thank you to the board for hearing us today and appreciate your responsiveness to uh, the Sidewalk and Park Vending Committee. Thank you, Mr. Shivani. I appreciate that. Um, uh, Commissioner uh, Colosso. Uh, thank you, uh, President Good. Thank you for your uh, very thorough report, Mr. Shivani. Um, I just had one clarifying question. So we are paying for services that are going to happen, not services that have happened, right? Correct. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that piece because I know sometimes AFDs come at the end and we are, you know, paying a, a bill at the end after the service has been completed. So uh, I appreciate you getting this into us uh, before work is completed. I will remember that for your future AFDs, Mr. Shivani. Um, but I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Vice President Garcia. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, President Good. Mr. Shervani, I have a question and a comment. Uh, questions, what's the difference between this contract and the Imagen contract? Because we just approved that maybe a couple weeks ago. Uh, so the Imagen contract um, was a, there were, they uh, applied for three 
uh, tosses. So um, the initial one that was for them was the development of promotional material to update any material as we move forward. Um, you know, if the permit fees goes up or if the rules and regulations change. Um, the other contract um, that's similar to uh, MCG and Associates, which is like the same one, um, would be the outreach. Um, so they have different, uh, our understanding is that they have different ties to the community. So they may be partnering with different community organizations. So essentially they will both provide the same services just um, in collaboration with uh, different agencies. And with that reach, we're hoping to um, be able to get information on the Cyber and Park vending program out to more vendors or those interested in becoming uh, vendors. And uh, the other uh, toss, which is the technical assistance, um, that's essentially just a walkthrough. So if there's any seminars, webinars, or even in our stakeholder meetings, if uh, there is anyone that needs like hands-on assistance, um, similar to what the business source centers were providing at the initial start of the Cyber and Park vending program, but uh, we're limited in their funding, uh, we have contracted with these uh, contractors to provide that uh, technical assistance if need be just so there's you know no one's missing out on that um, step-by-step guidance if they need it okay so in 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 um, as overall they're both doing the same thing it's pretty much the same contract they're just it's just a bigger outreach or a bigger audience that having two contractors would be able to uh, reach out to yes that is correct okay and and okay, that's fine. Um, my uh, my comment is, um, I see that there is a lot of conversations about redoing material or having brochures. Uh, this is for the street vending community, right? That these brochures materials will go out to, right? Correct. Um, can I, my suggestion is, and my recommendation is, if we can make the brochures more reader friendly. Um, I, I, I know now we can get graphics in, we can do a little bit more. In the past, when I, when I came in, the brochure was a little lengthy in text, and I think we just be, need to be a little less lengthy and more to the point, but with, uh, with maybe, you know, added, a more updated flyer is what I'm saying. Um, so I, and obviously, you know, I, I don't have to repeat this, but in multiple languages, of course, and all of that great stuff, but, um, if that's possible and if there's a way that I can probably uh, maybe see one of your final or close to final drafts before it goes out to the public just so that I can um, just to take a look at it to see how reader friendly it is. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I uh, sort of felt the same way initially. So um, with this contract that was with the Iman group, I specifically wanted them to uh, focus on making them more reader friendly. So they did provide us with uh, with that, and I'd be happy to send it to you so I can get your feedback on it. Um, just so you know, because I I definitely want it to be understandable to all, um, not just those who are familiar with the rules and regulations. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Um, because this is a community that are, might not, um, uh, uh, you know, th- be so familiar with all the regulations and who. This is the other. I talked to Martin about this before too. And also identifying who has authority over what. Uh, so, for instance, identifying that the city has authority of the public right of way, and so forth. And then, for example, separating that county has the authority for the health permit. Just kind of identifying who, uh, where do they go? Like almost a navigation, but in in the print would be what I would ideally look for. But I would appreciate if you can send me that draft, and I, I'm happy to just take a you know take a look at it. Okay, I will definitely do that. Um, that's all for me. Thank you very much, President Good. And Thanks, thank sir. you very much to you both, by the way, on, on your work on this. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Um, uh, Commissioner Villegas. Thank you, um, and uh, thank you, Mr. Shervani, for your report. Um, I've been so intimately involved with you know the work that uh, Streets LA has been doing, so I already know what's uh, uh, what's involved, but I appreciate my colleagues' questions and uh, just for context, you know, so we can give them a bigger view of um, the many um, vendors that we have, the many vendors that we also partner with in multiple languages. Um, and uh, it, I think that provides just context in terms of the toss, this toss that we're going to be doing. And, um, and, you know, there are multiple rules. Um, there's at least 42 different rules that vendors need to follow. Um, and 
when we have a vendor coming to get a permit from us, it is not over. Um, they still need to get multiple um, permits uh, from business license, from uh, also from LA County Public Health, uh, and uh, and it's just it's complicated. Um, and because we have uh, thousands of vendors in the city of Los Angeles, of you know, for million constituents, the outreach is far and vast. Um, and so, I, I uh, can you know, empathize with our uh, Streets LA team for just going above and beyond for their their work. But we know that uh, when we have these types of items before the board, it's imperative that we just give you guys all the big picture, um, so you understand um, you know where we're coming from. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Shervani, for your report. I don't have any. I didn't have any questions to begin with, but I don't have any more comments. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Reese. Um, I have no questions, uh, Mr. Shervani. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll take a motion to approve the item. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Villegas. So I have a second. <coughs> second. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Any concerns, Garcia? No, none for me. Great. Um, Hearing none, the item is adopted forthwith. Thank you, Mr. Shervani, um, and uh, good luck. Thank you all. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, folks. Um, <clears throat> item nine. Item nine um, is a communication from uh, the mayor's office, um, an administrative item. Um, the mayor has approved and authorized uh, the Board of Public Works on behalf of the Bureau of Engineering exemption from the cost containment measures memo execute task order solicitation number 21-006 for the phase two environmental site assessment work um, at the 25th and Harriet Street site to address legally mandated air quality management district regulations due to on-site production of recycled asphalt pavement. Um, do I have a motion to accept this communication from the mayor's office? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Villegas. Second. Second. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Any concerns or questions, Commissioner Colosa? All right, hearing none, uh, this communication from the mayor's office or administrative item is adopted and received, or received and filed. Um, I believe that clears the decks, Dr. Campos, yes? Yes, it does. All right, well, thank you, um, everyone, uh, uh, for a great meeting, and uh, this meeting is officially adjourned. Y'all have great days.